We lost. True indeed. We lost. Lord, no, we lost. I'm about to say something to make you not like me. You might catch feelings and you might want to fight me. But I don't really care. I'm going to say it anyway. Why most comedic guys seem soft and gay? I'm not saying all but a large amount. Have you ever heard the words that come out of their mouth? Yeah, they cuss like a sailor, but they follow my eye. They carry oaks and wear makeup and thinking it's hot. I think they need to stop. This is a new era. I wonder if the breath was of a war mascara. It probably was a death mask misunderstood. Don't let them D-boys catch them up in the hood. Why and why? Stop patrolling the block. We get shot by the cops and we calling the cops. Come on, I. Y'all was on another level. The black man was God, the white man, the devil, now the white man. Or better yet, the European and the Mars and the bean pies are sold by Koreans. I'm talking what I'm seeing. I'm just a reporter. How you call a woman to be? And you got a daughter. Talk about the Hebrews, the demonized women. And choose Esau over brothers and Kenny. Probably timid, soft, and scared to fight. Yelling and wearing spikes, trying to fake me out right. But you can't fool me, cause you make a little noise. Cause deep inside, y'all some scared little boys. Friend, man. That's right. Try for your friend, bro. Right. Help me out. Meet me halfway. Come on. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna be your friend. Peace and love. Let me be your friend. Peace and love. I said you ain't never met a more like me. And you ain't never, ever, ever gonna meet one again. Now let me be your friend. Peace and love. Let me be your friend. Peace and love. I said you ain't never met a more like me. And you ain't never, ever, ever. Again. I want to be your friend, peace and love, you let me be your friend, peace and love, uh-huh, hey yo, I used to be a thug, until I met the prophet, now I'm all about love, truth, peace and freedom, till I return to a law, one day we gon' meet him, I'm all about justice, that's the focus of the message, sometimes Asiatics make me want to forget the lessons, I be all up in my passion, from all the more passion, all things considered, I start laughing, a grown man with a ponytail, another calling us Neanderthal, and he all pale, I mean for real, this is what it come to my brother We got nothing better to do than talk down to each other Yeah, we can be scholar 
godly Or we can get gutter We are the children of our father And the breast of our mother Has nursed us all And first of all We beefing while the peen Trying to murk us all You need to chill my brother Tell the elder the same Cause on the real my man I'm really about them things I can take the feds off And get back in the low And return to the state Where they used to call me dope But no I'm rolling with the prophet of the law Want love not war Standing on that floor And I'm holding the Square. The compass and the axe that might be too deep Yo, let's not get off track See, I probably was an adept Do you know what that is? An Egyptian adept is a brother who lived By the universal science developing the now. We call it Islamism, but it's the same My child said at the foot of a master I train you up, but I might have to bang you up I still love you And those that's talking that this ain't Islam Everything the prophet bought is in the Quran All the other stuff prostrate and cover up is just Alive and well, resurrected from hell With a story to tell, so pay attention and listen And consider the facts, you know it's humanly impossible for you to be black I guess a Chinaman is yellow, a Mexican is brown Just think for a second, how ridiculous it sound We can turn it around, but we must unite It's okay to disagree, but we don't have to fight Cause if we have to fight, you know how we get I'm still learning to love, no I'm not there yet So work with me fam and I'ma work with you And let's all work together and do what we gotta do Cause on the real side We haven't made no progress Since 1929 When the prophet left the flesh We got an Asiatic president Men murray men Psycho shooting up a club And don't see his own sin And those that say they conscious Then took your fucks Move straight to Hollywood And straight living it up And y'all picking it up Straight cheesing and grinning But it was your bread To help them set it off In the beginning Be careful what you put in your soul Cause it could blind you Unfortunately some people Get paid to misguide you Misguide you I was trying to get him out the bed. With this scandal, get up. With these videos yeah. of me and my wife the rest. Check it. Back I never saw my brothers and sisters serving these packages when I was with Dawid Ali and them and Taj and them used to come to Chicago. Uh, uh, I laid them old boys to rest. They was dead sleep anyway. Sleep walking. They keep sleeping. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I probably kept the charge. They don't care what any sick. All up in your ear, acting like you, you don't care. Barking all up in your ear. Look at that. Watch me bark in his ear. Watch me bark in his ear. Don't care. Oh, you Barking all up in your ear, acting like you, you don't care. Like you don't preserve life. Like you don't preserve life. You don't preserve your life. Oh yeah. And you really don't care. 
and you really don't care, right? Right? Oh, you don't care, right? Well, we gonna really check that. Well, we gonna check that. Back that, back that, back that, back that, back that. Since you say we ain't get to die. Blah, 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 blah. Blah. I laid them young boys to rest. Yeah. They was dead sleep anyway. Sleep anyway. I laid them old boys to rest. They was sleepwalking anyway. Sleepwalking anyway. I'm the people's grand sheep. People's grand sheep. I ain't seen them, man. I can't be. I laid them young boys to rest. They was sleepwalking anyway. I would take you on any day. Michigan, New York, Cali. Where you at? What you thought? From that town to Baltimore, Woo! every bottle roll is all raw. They ready, challenge. I don't oh, really think they want the problem. Hold up, raise the thought up. Hold up, back to a law, a law, law. Oh, um, play, play, oh, um, hey. I try to get them out the bed. Get them up. Get up. Sleep walking anyway. Sleep walking, sleep walking anyway. Woo! Wake up, keep talking. Sovereignty package. Not even when he was with Dawid Ali. You gonna remember that's right. Hey. Hey. Hold on. Let's bring it back. Only equals is the gods. Huh? 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 That's my sequel. Morse World TV citizens, they got a Moorish court on you too, cause you riding with me. Anybody riding with him. Let's go. I lay them old boys to rest. They was dead sleep anyway. He never sold his brothers and sisters sovereignty package. Only thing he ever sold was crack cocaine. <laughs> and I asked the law for forgiveness. <laughs> Talk to him. I laid them young boys to rest. They was dead sleep anyway. Hey, people ain't never met a man that I The only thing he sold his people was drugs. Crack cocaine. <laughs> to Hakka Bay and all y'all that's riding with him. All you Moorish World uh, uh, TV citizens, you're going to court now because he calling for a Moorish truck <laughs> court. <laughs> that's right. Asar Sadiel, you going to a Moorish court. Christian News and Interviews, you going to a Moorish court. Sean Sean, Moorish court. King Moab, Moorish court. Sunny Boxing, Moorish court. All of y'all going to a Moorish court. Cryptonomic, Yasmin, all of y'all. 
and my brother Angel snuffing up seven. He going through the Moorish court too, cause he riding with me, cause 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 y'all riding with me because he ain't never sell his people sovereignty package. He just sold my little big crack cocaine. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I call for a court on Brother Toronto Johnson and anybody who's riding with him with this scandal or with these videos of me and my wife frauding the people. Let me, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me cut the music. Let me cut the music before I bring Angel Snup Snup in the building. Family, you hear what he said? He's calling for a Moorish court. Let me... Talk to y'all for a minute. Now, we have a new segment now where I just got to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? All right. Let me talk to you. How y'all doing tonight? Y'all feeling all right? I hope y'all feeling all right. I'm feeling all right. I just want to take two or three minutes to talk to you for a minute. Or oh, as the old heads say, let me just talk to you for a taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to calm it down and then we're going to bring it back up. Oh, man, these people, when I said I put these boys the rest, I really meant it. People send me these videos on and on and on, and I watch these people going live. Oh, man, it's to the point where it's pathetic now that they go live with five. Let me, let, me, let me explain to you what I'm talking to you. Let me explain what I'm talking to you. They go live, not at five, but with five. With five people subscribed, watching them cry. <laughs> one got five viewers and one got 15. Oh, yeah. It's to the point where it's pathetic now. Like, give up. Come over here with the winning team. You want a job? What did Tony tell the brother that was against him? He said, you want a job. You want a job, Inky? Sure, Tony. Sure, Toronto. His name is Toronto Johnson. <laughs> You want a job? Come on over here with the winning team. Clean yourself up. Clean yourself up. Because y'all looking real bad over there. This thing is turning against you. I'm the people's grand sheik for a reason. I didn't choose this. The people chose me. And going against me is going against the people. And when I talk about the people, I'm talking about the real people. So y'all keep on trying. Keep on trying. Because at the end of the day, there is no way that you will be able to defeat the people. You can't defeat the people. The people have spoken. And you are looking pathetic. You looking pathetic. But I say keep on. All of my haters and my trolls ain't nothing but my free advertisement. So we're gonna spread this world all around the world. Let me do my Steve Harvey dance. We're gonna spread this all around the world. We got the rabbits in the chokehold. The rabbits are dead. And we don't want to see nothing to die. Are y'all ready? All right. We got Angel snuffing up in the building. Time to turn it up. But y'all are looking pathetic with five people watching for three hours. Oh, yeah. Looking pretty bad. So let me get this started. I think y'all ready. I be that more you gon' remember. I'ma be that more you gon' remember. I be that more you gon' remember.
number to our Bay front line till the law call my number. I be that boy you gon' be go, go. I'ma be that boy you gon' remember that's right. Let's go. Be that boy you gon' remember. Look at that now. Let's go. Call my you number. You a friend of the boys and you a friend of mine. I was told to watch my enemies now hold my line. Those who speak against the prophet they speak against me. And I'm speaking about the prophet no more you out me. Who is the first? Appreciate you coming on, man. And I, I'm telling you, man. Um, you know, I think we had a we had a crazy start uh, of yes, getting sir. to know each other. But um, man, I think we make a good team. Criminal, I do too. Crazy, for real. <laughs> criminal, 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 and crazy. Let's just embrace it. <laughs> Who cares? You Fine know, with me. You know, you know the amazing thing to me. This is one of the amazing things to me is that. Hold on. Check, check, check. One of the amazing things to me is that how people would make all these crazy statements and act like it bother a person like me and a person like you when, man, we got real problems if we really want to consider them to be problems. These crazy people ain't no problems. The things they say ain't no problem. Like, we got real things. Like, we got real bills, real jobs, real family, real things to be concerned with. So I say we just embrace it. Whatever. Who cares? Yeah. Um, but what I wanted to say to you is, brother, you know they have put you on the screen too now. What? <laughs> they, they, have, they have covered you in a video too for being on Boys World TV. <laughs> you know that, right? No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't they did made a video about you. And I said, cook good is gracious. They just giving us all type of publicity, all type of advertisement. Yeah, they made videos. I wish some of that some of that stuff would come to my channel. <laughs> well, well, I mean, the stuff that they make up is really not that good, so it's really not getting no steam. But hopefully, yeah. 
Hopefully, I, I don't think I don't think a person understand how you two work. You know, it takes a little bit of charisma. It takes a little bit of uh, showmanship and it takes truth. You know what I mean? You just can't uh, have 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 crazy stories talking behind a camera, behind an emoji or something and think people believe you. Don't nobody believe that garbage. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody yeah. believe that. But um, but brother, we back tonight, brother. And some of the topics we're going to talk on, we're going to stick on, but we're going to stick to. But one of the things that we gotta gotta go back to is Yakub. Yes, that's what we where left did, off at. Where did we drop off at Yakub? Now, shout out to my brothers in the nation of Islam. I want to make a disclaimer: this is not an attack on your theology or philosophy. This is just something that we examining as a people. And if anyone wish to come on and discuss it, I'll I'll gladly open up the platform to discuss it in fact i would love for uh someone who is qualified on the philosophy or theology of yakub to come on and have uh, a truly um intellectual dialogue on the subject i'm just curious about some of the things that i like to inquire about but this is angel snup nup show tonight and um i'm just going um I'm going to pivot off him because he was a member of the Nation of Islam and he is more familiar with the teachers from the Nation of Islam point of view as opposed from my point of view who has never been a member of the Nation of Islam. So, brother, Yaqub is the big head scientist who was said to be uh, black as 13 million midnights. And, <laughs> and, he, and he created the white man and the white man is the devil, quote unquote. I mean, you don't believe that the white man is the devil anymore? The, 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 uh, the attribute of devil, I can get with, but as far as the some, devil, yeah, as a, 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 a actual living type being, no. So, so. You know, you did not you denounced everything in the nation. Except bean pies. I like bean pies. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Hey, like Tori X. hey Tori X, you know I love you. You know I love you. Don't let this brother <laughs> mess our relationship up. I love you. <laughs> the streets and all the way to consciousness, man. This brother. I love bean pies. <laughs> yeah, I love bean pies. I ain't gonna lie about that. So, so the rest that like the Yakub, you have no, um, you don't embrace anything of it? I, I tell you this, a lot of these stories that we find in religious texts or whatever, it might be some type of reality behind it. It's just right. this story that has been told and we really don't know what it was based upon. And you know, it's just a story that was told through the generations right. or whatever. Because when you look at the Yakub story, because when we talk about genetics and, and, and hybrids and all this type of stuff, and if you look at uh, um, the story, I mean, it, it does have real, it, it's, it's realistic in a, in, a, in a way. Yeah, but the way I think, the, I think the problem is, is the way that uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told the story, he comes off as it's, it's literal and not metaphysical or metaphorical. Right. And that's the way he tells the story. He tells it as if it's a real story. A story, but that, right. But, but, right. As, but as time has went on, as time has gone on, people seem to has ma have made the story uh, something that it wasn't like when it was told. Like it's a metaphorical story. It's an allegorical story. It's allegory now. You yeah. know but the original story, it didn't, it didn't come off as it was allegory. No. And and those who believe don't view it as allegory. They view it, and we are taught, or I was taught in the Nation of Islam. This is the history that was taught by God to Elijah Muhammad. This is God telling us this is what happened. This is not right. an allegory. This is not a story. Master Farah Muhammad is God, and we say that this is the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. Actually, these are the teachings of Master Farah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad is his student and his messenger. These are not his teachings. The teachings belong to Master Farad Muhammad. Right. But the way the way that he says it is he he actually owns it. 
And he says it like, like you said, you know, he said he was taught by the master for Rob Muhammad. Yeah. So, so you don't accept any of it on the literal, li the literal concept. No. no. What makes you want to speak out against these stories or make you want to examine these stories as opposed to, I want to say you speaking out. What makes you want to examine them? You think our people are stuck in the stone age as it relates to religious philosophy? I think that's uh well I don't think I know that's a big problem for us. What that's a big problem for us. I I I feel as though these were things that we need back in the day, 1930, whatever. That was fine during that period of time. I feel as though we've to the point, and let's just for instance, if I was a believer in the God concept, at this point in time, I feel as though. We are supposed to be the God, not we're not supposed to be praying to gods or, or whatever. We're supposed to be by this time the God. These are rituals. These are lessons that's supposed to turn us into God, not stay a child forever and ever. You can't stay a child on and on and on to eternity. When are we going to grow up? Right. We keep calling ourselves even in 2020, 2002, we still calling ourselves, I'm a child of God and proud of it. You're a grown man. You're a grown woman. How long are you going to stay a child? You know, <laughs> man, a, a chick you can't stay a chick. Christian brothers and sisters come for you. Don't do that. That's how they, that's their saying. I'm a child. What, 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 what is it that they say? Yeah, you, you, you can't be a child forever. Right. And God, even when you, you look can, at the. You, you're look, your mother's child forever, aren't you? Yeah, but I'm, but, but I, I've become an adult and I can, I can do whatever my mother does. See what but I'm you're saying? you're still your mother's child, aren't you? Forever. I will forever be my mother's child. But I'm, but I'm, 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 you grow and now you're on the level where your mom is at. You can, I, you can, you can have your children, have your job. You can do whatever your parents can do. You can do, and matter of fact, you can do better than your parents. Most parents want their children to do better than them. So this is where we want to, I am, this is my mindset. This is the way I look at it. If I'm a child of God, God actually wants me to be better than him. Most parents want their children to grow up and be better and do better than what they was. But didn't Jesus so, say what I have done all men can do and what I have done all men shall be? So, right. And even greater things than these. Isn't that one of the Jesus saying? So, so that's what I heard. What's wrong with that? So, but we haven't gone to that level. We're still, we're still on the level of worshiping people. Instead of worshiping Jesus, we need to understand how do I get on his level and beyond? Because he could only well, take it to a certain level and he was gone. Jesus, though. That's the true teachers of Jesus. What I have done, all men can do. And even greater yeah. than these, because I go into because I'm I go into the Father. You know what I'm saying? So he's saying you can do even greater than him, but most people don't want to go to that level. But now when we looking at the um the Yaqub, uh, what part of the Yaqub story that you truly denounce? Which part? That they went into the desert, that which part do you because I don't want because we was there for a minute. Well, I'm not what part do you I'm, truly denounce? I don't really de denounce none of it. It's a it's a story. It's, it's an allegory. It, it 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 never happened. It's not real, <laughs> brother. You there's no stop, see. There's no evidence to show that this ever happened. There's no kind of evidence. So so let me ask you a question. Where do Europeans come from then? In your concept and your reality. In my reality, I, me personally, I don't really care. I just know that they're here and I got to deal with them. I, so I really don't, I don't chip off. If you, if you could. <laughs> um, if you See, could. Some things, some things we will never know. But if you I could, have, I you have come have to the point. Concept or you just don't have a concept at all. You just, whatever. Well, I mean, you can come up with all kinds of theories. Nobody really, really knows. So you wasn't there. So you talk about, well, the white man, how, you, he wasn't there. How do you know where the white man come from? Who, who was there that can say this is what happened? We, who's to say that your mother or my mother really is our mother? We wasn't, we wasn't capable of being. We have to take somebody's words to say that's your mother, that's your father. We really, right. we really don't know. Right. So, so uh, Somebody had to be there. Now, that, now in my case, my so auntie said they was there. And, huh? Mama, baby, dad is maybe. Yeah, well, but I'm just saying your parents in general, because a lot of us, we get adopted as infants and we grew up with a mother and father. They're not, 
They're not our mother and father. We was adopted. And they never told us that we was adopted. Right, right. I got you. See what I'm saying? How do I? We we don't know. But I think I think when you're looking at the when you're looking at the Yakub uh, story, I think a lot of times uh, because it's supposed to be supposed to be a historical account, there should be some cross references somewhere. What when you were in the NOI, and I would ask somebody that was in the NOI this. Oh, yeah. by the way, let me say this. I would invite anybody to challenge or to question my belief systems also. Y'all think that's fair? I definitely will. <laughs> you can. You can want to try try a few right now. I really don't know. I really don't know about a lot of, about the the, yeah. the ideology of do the Morris Yeah. Yeah, I have to do I have to do some homework, do your homework on it. first. Um and, and and again, I say that just to be fair, because I don't want my platform to be lopsided and look like that I'm talking about or lashing out to people belief system because I'm really not. We're just having a conversation and a dialogue. But I invite anybody to uh, come forth and they can question my belief system just as we dialoguing about this, we can dialogue about more science as taught by Prophet Noble Jurali. Most definitely. We can dialogue that now. now and if it's religious influence, chances are it got some stuff in there. So yeah, you can find <laughs> it. Yeah, maybe we can do that at that show. Okay. <laughs> but like I said, I'm not, I don't like to get involved in things. I'm not in, in ignorant in pure ignorance. I know some Moorish brothers, and I was raised around a lot of the brothers. Oh, it's in, not in about Moorish being nice. It's about, it it's about truth today. It's not about being nice. It's all yeah. about being truth. It's not about absolutely. It's about, the, the The devil is nice till he gets you where he wants you. The devil is real nice. People think that the devil is a concept of ugly, of meanness, of 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 disdain. No, nah, the devil is nice. That's how the devil draw you in. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? You, the devil can't draw you in with fangs and blood hanging and, and flames all over the place. Nah, that, the devil look real nice. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's, it's about, like you said in the disclaimer in the beginning of the program, we're not here to bash nobody. We're not here to try to degrade or make mockery or nothing like that. Because we be, these are beliefs. What I would like for us to understand, we bring, we want to examine these beliefs. And I know that you've done your scholarship. I understand that you got your information, but a lot of things that they don't add to the, to the pot that will fulfill and make your, make your pot full. We don't talk about, does that sound logic? Is, is, is that, you know, does it, does it, does it uh, fit? fulfill the, uh, the, the criteria of common sense and reason and being analytical. Right. That's why it's called belief because belief does not require facts. Belief does not require being logical or common sense. So I could talk till I'm blue in the face. It doesn't mean any difference if a person wants to believe. And it does not make no difference how, what you show a person. A person is going to believe what they believe. So that's not what I'm not here to try to convert nobody to, or, or try to get you to get out of your religion. I just want us to come here, examine these things. And even when you come to me and bring something, cause me to think, because I could be wrong. Professor, I could be wrong. And that's <laughs> what this is about, this. growing. Let me ask you this. Growing. I'm, I'm going to shift just for a second. Mm -hmm. This is this is Jabari that uh, comes on Sidenetta TV, and he holds the unk. Do you believe that holding that up have some sort of power, significance, or light coming from it? I see a lot. Of, I see a lot of brothers that practice the comedic uh, science or the comedic um, teachings. They hold the unk up like that. You know what I'm saying? Is 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 is? Would you would you consider which would you consider that? Am, don't I, don't cons I, I consider that as as a part of some kind of new religion somebody has created. Maybe we. Uh, I want to ask Jabari what that mean one day. I've had a. I had a conversation with him. This is. Do you think this is odd? Do you think? Do you find it? Eh, what is this all about? Or what? Is, anybody know what that is all about? Is it's just. It's just symbolism of a new religion they've created based upon Egyptian comedic scholarship that they made up because nobody from Kemet taught you nothing. Man, you hard on them. Don't be so hard, man. No, nah, but I mean, that's just a fact. Nobody, I talked to 
I talked to uh, Jabari. Is that his name? Did I pronounce it right? Yeah, Jabari. Good brother. Yeah. <laughs> I talked to him. I made a video calling him a fake comedic priest. Oh, no, he's not a fake comedic priest. Stop, no. <laughs> okay. He the real deal. Okay he, came, okay, he came on the video. He told me that I was wrong for slandering him, and I shouldn't have made the video, and I should have talked to him first before making the video, right? Okay, so we in the chat room. I said, well, I, I, I have no problem with giving you an apology, sir, but I know for a fact nobody from Kemet taught you anything. I know this for a fact. That's a hey, that's a hard truth that people got to deal with, though. You know, who or nobody from Kemet ordained you to do nothing. You were, you was a Negro born in America. Oh my God, what? And you you've been there for five hundred years. You never been to no Kemet, Egypt. You didn't say that to no Jabari. Yes, I did, and and no. he didn't. He never made no He's reply. A comedic priest. Yeah, you could be a comedic priest. Some stuff that you made up, you manufactured, you fabricated. No, you because can't nobody from Kemet like that. Come on, brother. Nobody from Kemet taught him anything. All this is fabricated stuff that these people made up. <laughs> I'm laughing because you actually. I don't think they made it up. They got it out of books or something. But, but it's made up. <clears throat> it's made up because nobody from Kemet taught them nothing. <laughs> How long has Egypt Kemet been? Extinct. It's extinct <coughs> for thousands of years. It's, it's not extinct. Is it? it's, it's, this this is my best guess. I don't care. Look, he said Kemet, Kemet is extinct. Kemet ain't nothing but look. This is okay. This is the reality. Oh, I don't want to. You know, I know I'm going to piss some people off. This is the reality, brother. Right. Get a man. Get a Kemet. Man. You? Kemet ain't nothing but a bunch of rocks. Oh no, it's bigger than nothing that. but. It's nothing but a graveyard. These people are grave robbers. That's all thing they've done. The, 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 the tombs ain't nothing but a, a large mausoleum for the dead, for the royalty. No, they 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 they, they monuments for, for remembrance too, I would think. No, 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 no. These things was a big vanity thing for the kings and the, the pharaohs that was there. When they died, they built all this stuff to memorize the royalty. Not to memorize, not to re remember the poor peasant guy in the Where field. Where did you get this stuff from? I mean, it's common sense. Because the only people they talk <laughs> who about... Is who is your teacher? <laughs> I want to talk to your teacher. My teacher is just common sense. I'm, I'm trying to... All right, come on. I'm just trying to analyze the information here. Right, let's go. They don't... Look, when they talk about Kemet, they only talk about the royalty. They always talk about King Tut or whoever. They never talk about the peasant that was in the street. They never talk about the, the, the person that was selling oars on the corner or or, 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 or the slaves or the, yeah, you, or know, the, I, or the I, you know what, brother? I don't mean to cut your wisdom, but that is crazy that uh, every time we talk about history, the Moors do it too. They always yeah. talk about the Moors that was the ruling caste, the Moors yeah. that was the great leaders, the Moors that was the great conquerors, but you never hear about the one that, that, that was sitting down and, 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 and making the beer, sitting down, making the uh, the stew, sitting down, mm -hmm. uh, uh, making the mud house. You never hear about them. Mm -hmm. but you always hear about the great kings and queens and we are kings and queens. Everybody wasn't kings and queens. It's impossible. Not everybody. Everybody came in. Oh, I just made a video about that. Look. <clears throat> Somebody got to be Yaku. subject to the kings and queens. We're going to get back to Yahoo. We bounced around. Yeah. But we, we got to talk about all this stuff, though. Look, look. You want to be a king. Okay, y'all y'all want to be royalty, right? Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You want to be royalty. Oh, yes, I am the king of the, and the pharaoh. Yes, we, we're the kings and queens. Okay, look. Okay, you got to take the bad with the good. We do know that the kings and the queens, the royal families, they practice incest. Those people they did. marry their the, those people, the father would marry his daughter, the mama would have sex with the son, they kept that blood in themselves. There, that's what that's how that's what they practice for I don't know how long. No, they say that's 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 uh, allegory, metaphor. No, that's what that's what the royal family done. Even in Europe, they was doing that kind of stuff because they didn't want to get their blood mixed up with the regular folks out there. 
Right. This is what they practice. So that means you must believe in incest because that's what they did for generations. They practice incest. Oh, my goodness. That's your people, though. Not my people. I don't, I don't want to be claiming no people that that, that practice I mean, incest. You, you, you ain't got to, you ain't got to want to claim them. You are a part of the African diaspora. Diaspora. Not as a not as a Negro, no. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you call yourself. It's what you really are. No, I, I see. That's another thing. The so-called Negro in America, we ain't Africans. Oh my the so-called Negro in America, we ain't Aboriginal either, so don't get ready to hoop and holler. What? You ain't that either. What are we? You are your, just like Frederick Douglass said, Frederick Douglass said that the Negro is a brand new, a brand new hybrid that came off the slave plantation, a new admixture people. Right. That's what we are, brand okay. new. But, but Now we carry that DNA. We that's carry all, that DNA. I think that's the point, though. I think that's the point. The point is not that um, we are the literal African as we see today and the African of yesterday, uh, but we are connected by DNA. Yeah, but you got, but you're also connected. You got other DNA in in, in us. Also, yeah, we yeah, have native. We got but, we got Aboriginal native in in our bloodstream too. Also, the yeah, European. Yeah, but people, but people acknowledge the African strain because the African is more prevalent, just like your nose. Your nose is more uh, consistent with uh, probably somebody in Uganda than it would be to somebody in Italy. That's all. I, I, I always, they say you can't, they say that you can't do that. They say that you can't use this as an example, but, but I use this as an as example because it still rang true. My dog, Angel, was a half German Shepherd, half Chinese child. She looked like a German Shepherd. But the American Kennel Association, the American Kennel Club will not accept her as a German Shepherd because they know because she has Chinese child. I don't care what she looked like. Right. I don't care what she looked like. And any out, anybody out here that you sell purebred animals, you know how that stuff works. If you got, if they know that that dog, I don't care what your dog look like. If, if they know that that dog is connected somehow with another breed, it's not pure. It's not going to be accepted. It's, Absolutely. It's and, so, and so I think that's why, um, I mean, I, I consider myself, uh, and, and I can prove it rightfully so, a Moorish American. I don't consider myself, uh, African is actually a continent, you know what I mean, with, with over yeah. 60 some countries on it. So to, yeah. to say African is an ambiguous term at best. Uh, but I think when people say African, I think what they're saying is they connected to the people in the phenotype, not necessarily saying that they're culturally Africans today. You see what I'm saying? Because, yeah. because you have your, your nose is the same nose of 3,000, 5,000, your lips are the same lips, are the same lips from an African or Olmec over 5,000 years ago. Just because you're here, it doesn't take away your phenotype. You feel what I'm saying? That's an African nose or an Olmec nose, where Olmecs would be indigenous and an African yeah. indigenous from Africa. You see what I'm saying? So I think that's the argument, not saying that they're the same African culturally as we see today. I don't think that's the argument, though, Snuff. Well, that's that's nice, but see, you want to be a Negro? For, for me, I'm not going to say that I'm a Negro. That's something that the cracker put on us or whatever. I mean, this is 2022. We're we're supposed to be free. You can determine and come up with your own. See, I I'm happy with being who I am in in the skin that I was given. I have no. It's like your 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 parents. Uh, you can't you can't choose your parents. You, if your if your father was a crackhead and your mama was a prostitute, that's your parents. There's nothing that you could do about it. Right. I have no choice in the game as far as where I come from, who my parents were. But now I'm an adult and I'm grown. I say that the once called Negro in this country, we are a brand new, unique people, Absolutely. and we should and we should embrace who we are and accept that. 
we don't have to we don't have to sit around here trying to be something we've never been because but that's think, foreign that's foreign and who are they anyway but See, i think the thing is this the thing is this snup no, nup no. i think when you cut the branches off the tree and the tree can't connect himself back to the root there's that that causes more confusion so it's not trying to be uh the people of yesterday today is understanding your connection to your people of yesterday so it can make you better today because you can see their accomplishments. Let me give you an example. I like this conversation. Let me get an example. Uh -huh. Here in Baltimore, they got a place called Greek Town, right? Every yes. year they have a Greek festival and they shut down the street on Eastern Avenue in East Baltimore. Now, what they're doing is they know that they are not the Greeks in Greece a thousand years ago, but they do the ceremonies, the dances, the festivals that has been going on for thousands of years so they can remind their children of their greatness, so they can celebrate their greatness. And so their children begins to build their self-esteem around the greatness of yesterday. And so mm -hmm. when you look at our people and you cut off what they did yesterday, whether it's painted with a wide brush or whether you can narrow it down to parts of West Africa or indigenous America, when you neglect to connect yourself to that, what do you have to really teach your children to live up to? That's I think that's one of the arguments. Well, <clears throat> this is this this is the problem that we need to. Oh, this is something where we miss. We have a misunderstanding. We've never been part of those people. We we carry the trace. We carry the DNA. But we, our origins, are right here on a slave plantation. There's, I know, there's a lot of people that don't don't like to hear that. You know, we we was in. We come from Africa or whatever. No, you see. We need to, I could break it down real simple and real quick if people could keep up with it and show you beyond a shadow of a doubt. You have no, I've been listening to Dr. Clark and Dr. Ben. I've listened to all these different scholars. I'm listening for something. I'm listening for the actual connection besides of what we look like, a physical. What is our actual connection to Aboriginal people or Africa? And I don't See the what, actual. Okay, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. What type of connection do you mean when you say that? Because you mentioned physical. So when you say actual connection, what specifically are you talking about? Do you want to see the slave ship manifesto? Do you want to see how they took indigenous people from north, uh, uh, um, the north part of the United States, put them on a boat, and took them down the the Atlantic and dropped them off at Florida and Mississippi? What would you like to see? Because those like things exist. You see, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about slavery. And okay. a lot of people, a lot of people make crazy arguments about slavery. Where are the boats? Where are the boats? That's the goofy argument because people don't understand that during slavery, the boats was cargo ships. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And so when they stopped using them for slavery, they started using them for other forms of cargo. And so they used them until it was done. Like somebody in here now saying, where is the slave ships? I'm telling you that they were no more than cargo ships. They made, they were simply made to transport people. And then they, they converted them to transport cotton, to transport spices, to transport everything. So the ships just kept using them until they were destroyed or was unable to be used anymore. That's what you mm -hmm. have to understand. We were cargo. So that's where the slave ships went at. And there's a few around, but not much because they kept using them. They was business. It was business. But now let me say this. You can actually find the manifestos of these slave ships. And you can also find from the manifestos where they, whether, whether the slaves was picked up from the Ivory Coast, whether they was picked up from North Africa, West Africa, East Africa. You can, the manifestos exist because, again, they were cargo. And it's no different. It's, it's no different than when um, a tractor trailer goes to a port here in Dundalk 
go in any port, any city that has a port. They grab the tractor trailer and they put that thing off the boat and sit it on the tractor trailer and the tractor trailer drive off. That's what slavery was. You know what I'm saying? You went to a port, they dropped the slaves off. They went to another port, dropped some more off. They went to another port, dropped some more. It was business. You see what I'm saying? So now I say this. Every time they dropped someone off, they had manifestos. The same way when someone goes to a, a port, a shipping port today, there's a manifesto as to what's on the back of the truck. You follow me? It's a manifesto. So that's what exists. Not necessarily all the boats. Not many boats exist because once slavery was abolished, the boats was converted to be used for other sorts of cargo. But my point to you is that they have the manifestos coming from Africa, and they also have the manifestos where they would take people from other parts of the United States, put them on a ship, and take them around to Mississippi or wherever they would take them on uh, uh, down south, and they would claim that these are African slaves. Then they were mm -hmm. selling indigenous people as African slaves because they had the theory that the African slave was more stronger than the Indian slave or the American Indian slave. So they would doctor it up and say, we bought these from the Ivory Coast, but in fact, you can get the manifesto and see that the manifesto, the boat was in Maine or the boat was in New York. And then they're, they're, they're Swing that joint around. And so my point is, you say that we're not from there. I'm telling you that you can pinpoint where most of, not everybody, but you can pinpoint where most of the manifestos came from. Okay. You can you can pinpoint. And and and, and I and I agree with I, I, I'm not going most to most of us, <laughs> most of us didn't come from the uh the African shores through the way of slavery. Most mm -hmm. of us were right here. But the thing that they did was they would load people up and they would claim that they were from Africa. They would claim that they're African slaves. Mm -hmm. and, and then they would just take them around to another part of the United States and they would sell our people as African slaves. But many of us are indigenous to right here. Yeah. Um, like so many of us, I was, I was raised and I was taught in school that we were Africans, you know, come from the, the Alex Haley story and blah, blah, blah. I was I was taught that. Let me say this one more time. I agree with you, yeah. William Alexander. I never said I never said they brought millions of us. You got to listen to me close, brother. I said that most of us was already here. And what they did was they just shift us around the continent from Brazil. To Maryland. To Mississippi, all they did was shift us around. That's all they did. Um, so, 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 uh, brother William Alexander, and I'm telling you, I got all receipts for what I'm talking about. I sure this channel can go to that, but uh, to let me get back to Angel Snuff now. Yeah, I think it's more about the connection that people are looking for, not the the literal, like I was an Igbo, I was a Shanti, I was yeah. Fulani. Now, and I think that's that's going too far. I think that's going too far. Even the term Moorish, even the term Moorish is a political term. Mm -hmm. which I could break that down like it ain't nothing. Even the term Moorish is a political term. It's like when somebody comes to America and they become uh, uh, naturalized to become a citizen. That's just a political term. They're not indigenous American. It's a political term. So Moorish can be both twofold. It could be literal and it can be political. Gotcha. That's gotcha. right. A lot of people, if you, if, if you go to China today and you become a citizen of China, that's a political designation. That don't mean that you're Chinese. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I want to, Calvin Thornton, let your, let your guest talk, please. No, Calvin Thornton, this is crazy <laughs> and criminal. We talked together. That's my brother. My brother. Um, but I want to go back. I want to go back to uh because uh, you had some more thoughts about Yaku. We're just having a conversation, fam. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll let well, y'all join the let, let me let me let me let me uh let's do this. Let's get back on the Yaku real quick. We're yeah, gonna yeah, go back want, to that I too. Want, yeah, oh, it's all that, good. Brother, you know, you are going to be, I'm going to work on putting a podcast together, Criminal and Crazy. And <laughs> Criminal and Crazy. I'm, I'm telling you, we're going to put podcasts together. We're going to blow up. We're going to be like a million dollars worth of game, Criminal and Crazy. No doubt. 
<laughs> but go <laughs> ahead. I wanted to hear what you had to say about Yakub because I kind of shift a little bit. But go yeah, ahead. so okay, according to the story, where we left off the last broadcast, you had the devil being created on the island of Patmos or, or Palan. Okay. Right. This is where so we're we're at the point where the white man has been created. And so what happened was, and this is long after the, uh, the death of Yaku. Now, what makes the white man a devil, according to the teachings, is because of the process that it took in order to make the white man who he is. And it was a series of of killing the dark to save the light. That's how you, that's how the white man came into being. You had to kill the dark to save the light. Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're from a generation, because I know I remember, you remember at one time you had to get a blood test in order to get married. You remember that, right? Yeah, years ago, yep, years ago. Yeah, years ago. And Elijah Muhammad said that's that comes from the days of Yaku, where they had to lie to the people because they didn't want the dark people to marry the light. They want only the light folks to marry light. So if a, a dark-skinned person wanted to marry a light-skinned person, they would, say, they would tell them, your, your, your blood don't mix, to keep them apart. And also they would, also they would kill the dark babies. If dark-skinned babies was born, they would, they would tell the mother that your baby went to, to, to heaven or something, tell a lie. And they was, it was only saving light-skinned babies. You had to do that in order to, to, to come up with this light, this, these, these light skinned folks in order to get to that Caucasian DNA. So that's the reason why Elijah Muhammad called him a race of devils because the process of what it took in order to, for the, to bring them out, to make them, to bring them into existence, it was a system of lying and, and, and murder that caused them. And so that's why they like, like to lie and murder, according to the story. That's right. why they are who they are. So uh, now, now my question, while I'm, I never questioned, I was 18 years old, I never really questioned. I accepted this, the, the, the teachers on face value. But my thing is, so I never thought about it. You're saying that the white man is the devil, that this process or what? So you, I guess they was trying to say that the original people, they didn't lie. They didn't steal. They, they was just perfect, righteous type people, I guess. I, I, I don't know. I think. But I now, think, mind you, it was a black man that, that kicked this off. It was a yeah, black man. That kicked yeah, that's what made him kick that off, though. I, 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 according to the story, it was just something that was in him when he was a little boy. And he told his uncle when he was a little boy, <laughs> he was I'm going to with, create a people. He, he was playing with, 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 with magnets. With magnets. Because you know, magnets, opposites attract. He said he's going to create a, a people that would be like magnets to the black man. But they would, but the black man would be attracted to, to him. And and I don't know. See, there's a lot of truth to the story, but it's it's a story. But it's, it's got a lot of reality because, but I understand why we don't rebel against the white man. We don't really rebel and revolt against the white no, man. No, don't, don't say we, say you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> me. Well, us as a people, you don't see it in, in historicals. There's no evidence to show. We, we, we really don't, as a people, we really don't, we're not really rebellious against well, let me let me let me, let me let me let me show you back. Let me let me let me take you back real quick. What what? See, this is the this is the part of history that people don't really acknowledge mm -hmm. that this color uh, designation for hate or disagreements is a fairly new thing. Mm -hmm. It's a fairly new thing. This 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 color thing, this color coded thing. That's I mean, that's not even. 500 years old it's fairly new see back in the day europeans it was nation against nation so it was the french against the italians the italians against the russians the russians against the da 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 and when they went into africa 
they was going against tribes. They was mm-hmm. intermingling with tribes. They did they, they didn't start off like that. You know what I'm saying? That is fairly new. Yes. That's fairly new. And so when we now when you look at Moorish history of North Africa, when when Moors and the the dark skinned people that traveled from North Africa uh civilized Europe, you know what I'm saying? When they civilized Europe, they begin to enslave Europeans in the way that they enslaved one another. But it wasn't the slavery that we know today, but it was slavery yet and still. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. With that being said, we never was super brutal. I don't want to try to smooth over slavery because slavery is wrong any way you look at it. But we were never a super brutal people. Even when we went to war amongst tribe, when tribal wars were feud, before it went to the state of a total massacre, it was always some type of truce and the dominant just took over the weaker and they became one nation. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And the people that they enslaved, they literally was like what they were called indentured servants. This race color-coded racial thing is fairly new. And so I say all that to say this. I say all that to say this. Our people never had to resist oppression as it relates to color-coded oppression. This is a new thing. And that's why we are so discombobulated on how to confront it. Mm. We think everybody is our friend. Do you see what I'm saying? But this is a new era of time now. And so now they don't understand that Europeans that are in power and that's in control, they're about get back. Mm. They remember when they were enslaved by Africans whom they refer to as Moors. They remember these things. They remember. You ever see the old paintings where you have the uh, the Moor with the European woman, she is about as white as ivory soap. And they, you ever see the oil paintings? Yeah. These oil paintings was 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 mostly painted by French, French uh, artists, because they wanted to throw the propaganda to the people that this is what the Moors have done to your people. And so what they did was they began to psychologically stir up the Europeans. And to mm. this day, the Europeans intellectually are on some get back. We don't understand history. Though. We don't understand that it's on get back. And so they don't. They think that one day they're just going to say, "Okay, we cool." And we're talking about the powers that be. So I don't think to your to 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 your point. I don't think we are scared to fight the oppressor. I just think that we haven't evolved enough to understand that mm-hmm. this is war. And it's not all Europeans. It's the Europeans that are in power. Yes. That control the wealth. That control the politics. So if you want to change the dynamic, those two things that you have to consider. Get control of some politics. Get control of some wealth. Matter of fact, this this, this, uh, conversation points out with the story of Yaku. I mean, just what you just said, but this happened even before Yaku. Now, the island got, it was too many of them. They left the island of Palan. They went back, and he never really said exactly where they went back to. We just, I'm just going to say like the tribe of Shabazz. Okay, so right. they went back to the, the tribe of Shabazz and intermingled, no big deal. They became part of the population, these strange people, whatever. But pretty soon, According to the story, they noticed that the that these black folks started acting funny. They started um, killing each other, gossiping, slander, lying, slander, and they're trying to figure out what what has happened. And so they decided they figured out all this wasn't happening until these these pink people showed up, and they blamed them for the behavior these these behaviors of 
of the people. And so it was decided by the king, round them all up. And we gonna, they got to get, I don't know where they're going, but they got to get the hell out of here. They started rounding them up. Now, Elijah Muhammad, according to the story, said there's still white people in that area because some of the black people hid them. So that's why there are still white people in that area. But, what uh, area is this? He never really said. I, I don't remember reading exactly what area they're supposed to be, but that's why they are in Mecca, Arabia, and in the desert. They in Africa because of, of this. They was hidden by some of the people. They was hidden. Hmm. But they rounded up as many as they could and they stripped them of everything except a, a piece of cloth to cover their shame and they marched them across the desert to Europe. And then, see, this is where it coincides with what you was talking about. Now, these people are holy and righteous, right? They're holy and righteous and goody two shoe. Why wasn't, for me, why is it necessary? Okay, you don't like the people, they troublemakers. Okay, I got that. Why is it necessary for you to strip them down to nothing with a little cloth, you know, little cloth to cover their shame? and marched them across the desert, who knows how many of them died, you know, to, to Europe. That's inhumane. You know, that, that's, to me, that's inhumane. And so I was thinking about that. I'm like, how well did the white folks, according to this story, you all, you just said or gave the reason why the white folks so angry at dark-skinned people. If this story is true, there was no reason for you to do to them what you've done and marched them across the, the, the desert like that. Then... Once they got dumped in Europe, according to the story of Yakub, I mean, that's what happened. When they got dumped in Europe, they they uh, degenerated to a, a, a beast-like state, became cavemen or whatever, and eating their flesh raw and, and doing all, you know, hair grow all over their body. They became, they are the, the, the they became the caveman. Now, my question to you is, brother, so for instance, you and I just they just grabbed us and just threw us in, in, in South America somewhere in some unknown just threw us, you know, dumped us somewhere. Now, just because, okay, not only us, but but our children, you know, whatever. Right. Okay. Now, these people remember these people were civilized, they got dumped into Europe. Now, just because you and me got dumped into a forest somewhere, does that mean we're going to lose our civility? It's not. We're still going to know how to do certain things. We're still going to know how to do, and we're going to pass those skills to our children. We're not That's going not to- necessarily true, though. That's not necessarily true. Because this is why it's not necessarily true. That's not mm -hmm. necessarily true because, I mean, you can, you can maintain your core nature but you will leave some of your cultural overtones because right. culture can change. So a lot of things that we do, we do from culture. You eat with a fork because it's the culture. You see what I'm saying? Some Absolutely. people in Africa eat with their hands. Some people in China eat with sticks. So it's yeah. the culture. And so it depends. You know what I mean? You can't change your core nature, but you can change your culture. And a lot of things that we see being done is cultural that we mistake to be something that is essential you follow me a lot of things yeah. we see it don't be essential it just be cultural so a lot of things that we see europeans doing is cultural because they lost from what they were used to over time absolutely right but i don't believe in the story personally i believe i yeah. believe I, I don't think the story is is is, is but if you if you I don't if, think if you and I, for the story to be literal but if you and i are civil and we have the knowledge, if we have the knowledge of making a gun, we have the knowledge of digging for oil. If we have, we got this knowledge, if it's possible, even in this new environment, we're going to try to express those things in, in, even in this new environment. We're going to try to express those things because we have that knowledge. So. That's not necessarily so. Again, when you look at when you look at the castles in Europe, those are many of those are Moorish castles. Show me one of us who have built the castle in the last hundred years. Those was built by us. These castles are known to be Moorish 
castles. I'm talking about mm -hmm. North African built castles. When we look at those castles in Europe, those are Moorish castles. And I ask, show me somebody who built a castle in the last hundred years. I don't know. I'm waiting for somebody to build a pyramid right now. <laughs> so this is what I'm saying. It's easy to lose knowledge of how to do things over time. That's that's something easy to be done. Like for instance, you take us right now. Mm -hmm. You take the average. You take the average person, right? You take the average person from our community. Back in the day, right? And this is the last fifty years. My great-grandfather, he passed away. My great-grandfather, he used to work for a Navy yard. And the story goes that my grandfather and his buddies would take wood that they was used to build ships. This is my great-grandfather. He's long gone now. Mm -hmm. Died in the 80s. He used to take wood from ships. And they used to grab pieces and pieces and pieces and pieces until they had enough to build the house that we all grew up in, that we all played in. They built this house from nothing. Mm -hmm. Follow what I'm saying? You take the average person today, even with a job, they couldn't go to Home Depot and build a house. No. Now, this was commonplace in our community in the 40s and the 30s. This was common. You follow what I'm saying? Many yes. of our people today don't even know how to farm, more or less than even make a garden. So it's no. not always true that we will be able to take that to the next step. Like, for instance, before, look how, look how fast we lose. Look how fast we lose information. Before the integration, they had little schoolhouses in every community that was built by the men in our community. You follow me? And they would teach the little girls and the little boys in our community. Today, you don't see nobody attempting to build a school. I ain't talking about purchase one. I'm talking about build one. Mm -hmm. Knowledge gone. Absolutely. Gone. And, and that's just 50, 60 years. So you're talking about a European being in a uh, place of isolation for thousands or twenties of thousands of years, they're gonna lose something. I think that's the that's what goes with the story. But I I I I'm more so subscribed to natural selection. I don't really go with yeah. It. But that's that's the that's the story, and that that. Sort of explains, or like I was gonna saying, you're gonna be a more you keep talking to me, you're gonna be a Moorish American. I, I see, I'll be catching you, you'll be getting shook. You're gonna be a Moorish American. I'm gonna have a fan. I got fans for you. <laughs> 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 now, go ahead. What you were saying, I'm about to disturb your thought. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that that uh, that gives the reason of why they would hate dark skinned people if you if, if they would remember being drilled across the desert and that mistreated like that, of course, they would, they would pass that down. They would remember that, those type yeah. of things. Even in well, that story. More, well, I think it's more recent, though. I think it's more recent because the last stronghold of the Europeans was the Moors. The last stronghold. What I mean is, let me give them... I like this conversation, brother. You bring out, you bring, you bring out some good stuff uh, uh, that I'll be having in my brain. So real quick, and I, and then then we, we got to go to, I want to talk about the hair in a minute. I like that. <laughs> so, and I'm going to do, I'm going to start doing presentations on this. So when you look at like the slave trade, for example, you look at how it kind of started as a commerce thing. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And if we stop take if we, if we take the race out of it and understand that it was business, because before the slave trade, before the trade of African slaves, there were, it was the spice trade that was big business. You know what I'm saying? People will go across, I mean, caravans across the uh, the desert, the Sahara Desert. They would just go and they would trade spices from India back and forth. 
the Europeans, you follow me? The Europeans would go through Constantinople, you follow me, over there where Turkey is to get to India. And that's how they would get their spices. Well, when Constantinople was conquered by the Ottoman Empire, they had no way to get the spices. And so, as you know, Christopher Columbus trying to find India. They never tell you, you know what I'm saying? But he's trying to find India, so he's going down. He's they's trying to skirt around the edge of Northwest Africa to try to find India. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Absolutely. So in that, they also know that spices are coming through North Africa by the way of the Moors. Now, the Moors are also being, and the Muslims, the Moors are also, yeah, some people say the sugar trade. If I miss some stuff, you know I'm getting to. I just want to wrap it up real quick. Now, you know that in North Africa, the Moors are also have just been expelled out of Spain. They've just been expelled out of Spain. And so, when you're talking about the spice trade and they seeing all these slaves by our own people, they begin to get into the slave trade too. And so this is how you get in slaves getting on these ships at ports in North Africa, whether it's Ghana or whatever the case may be. It started because the European rerouted and then Spain also wanted retribution for how the Moors conquered and dominated Spain. So it's a twofold thing. It's a twofold thing. You know what I mean? It's about business and then it's about revenge. So when you talk about the Yakub story, <coughs> that story is like, it's way back there. But this is recent. You follow mm -hmm. me? This is recent of the Europeans that's in power. And so Pope Nicholas gives, uh, 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 gives the order to enslave all Moors. So it's about power. It's about who's in power. And they want to conquer this, 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 uh, somebody put in there the sugar trade, the sugar trade, the spice trade. And they're going to get them Moors out the way or dark skinned Africans out the way. So it's all about money. And so to your point about the revenge thing, that is an ongoing thing. That's an ongoing Absolutely. thing. So, so I, so I think the Yakub story, I think the Yakub story is 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 way, is way back, because this revenge thing is really on our heels today. You know what I'm saying? Like we intellectually slaves, right? we intellectual slaves, right? right now. Mm -hmm. Nobody got put no chains on you, as they say. We intellectual say. But now let me say this to you, bro. You said <laughs> something about the crazy belief. And you said it was, I don't know if you said it was crazy, where people say our our hair is antennas. <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was told that uh, before. Um, our hair, some of y'all probably have heard this before. I don't know. I guess I can't communicate with the universe because, <laughs> but somebody said, and they were Hebrew Israelites. This person was a Hebrew Israelite person. Uh, Israelite, black Hebrew. I don't know how that stuff goes. But they told me. Hey, look, hold that, up. They know how that stuff goes. The Hebrew Israelite. They're my people. Okay. Hebrew Israelites. Okay. That's right. I, I heard them like to use the word Hebrew. I heard it. They just like just say Israelite. Oh, they might change it up because we got to keep up. Sometimes people do evolve and say no more Hebrew because Hebrew is a yeah. language. We're Israelites. So that right, makes just sense. Israel. That makes sense. But I was told that our hair is special or whatever. I don't know exactly how special it, it is. But for some reason, our hair is connected to the universe and we should be able to uh, communicate with the universe through our, our hair. And I'm like, how? first of all, we know that our hair is nothing but dead cells. It's not any kind of metal. So how 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 does this work? And what kind of messages are you getting? Because you acting, you still acting like a regular Negro. So what kind of what kind of messages are you getting from the universe? 
You know, this person that told me that, every other word come out their mouth is a full letter word. Kiss my and bad. What is the word? You know, what is the universe telling you? So, and most so of the time, do you know who the Hebrew was, or is this was a random one? Because we can't have a, you talking about Hebrew. It was a sister that it was a sister that used to come on my platform all, all the time, and I used okay. to talk to her all the time. And she was telling me that our hair, we can talk to the universe because of our hair. And I'm like, okay. And yeah, so, I, so did she ever tell you what they what she communicated with the universe? No. I, no. What I what I've heard is is that. Your your hair is like antennas, and it can uh, bring you certain frequencies into your intellectual being or spiritual being, though. Right. So, how does that work? Because we're energy, and and yeah, and, well. and, and, and your hair is 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 is, as it said, is a conductor of that energy. So, how does that work? I okay. Mean, so, so let me tell you something. You ever have? Uh, a static shock. You ever see right. static and it raised the hair up on your arm? Yeah. It works just like that. Energy is everywhere. And so when you're talking about the locks or you're talking about not cutting your hair, the same mm -hmm. way that you have static that can raise the hair on your arm, there, that also happens to the hair on your head. But the energy that it's attracting is a high frequency energy that now, but now let me be clear though. I don't think a dumb, silly fool, just because they got some dra dreads, will be able to tap into that frequency either. However, I'm telling you that we have all seen it as children, where from static, the hair on your arm raise. We even mm -hmm. get static shock. So we're talking about energy. We're not talking about a silly fool just to drew some dreads and talking crazy. We're talking about people who are in tune. So maybe the person that you was talking to, they just heard it and they're just philosophizing it. They're not really living it and understanding it. Well, the, the, the question still remains, what's the message that you're getting? Like what I said, is, I don't know about the message. I'm saying that it's a conduit of energy, and that energy helps power you. You are you are uh, 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 electrons, protons, and neutrons, and so your thoughts are not your body. Therefore, the energy that entering to your body is something of the unseen uh, value. You see what I'm saying? The thoughts. Yeah, but are you not don't need body. you don't need no static electricity to live. No, no, no. Oh, yes, you do. You need electricity to live. You do. Yeah, you need you need the you firing need. Of, of of electricity and, and all these different chemical things. Uh, yeah, you definitely going on need electricity your body. though. If you have right. no electricity in your body, you're dead. Right, I understand that, but you don't need that to to live. You have people on death row that ain't nowhere near no electricity, nothing. They have to sleep on concrete blocks. And they they live for, for decades and decades and decades. They don't electric, they don't get no static electricity, nothing. They and they, no, they no, live no, like that. No, no, the, the, the electricity, the electricity, brother, it cannot be contained within or without some walls that we see by our eyes. This is this is something that 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 that's a phenomenon, like when we see how lightning can go through a, anybody ever seen that before? Lightning can go through a window without breaking a window. You ever seen that? Go on YouTube, check it out. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? electricity has the ability to uh, uh, to go through a certain frequency and penetrate any and everything to enter certain fields of energy. So that's what it's talking about. I don't know. I don't think that people are getting messages. I, I really don't know what that meant. But I didn't mm -hmm. hear the person say it, but maybe they have reason for that. But I will tell you that we are energy and that our hair, our mind uh, uh, can be a transmitter of that energy. I, 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 I can go with that one. I can go with that one. Like like me, you know what I'm saying? I'm like you. I, I, I'm bald here. I don't, I'm, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but I believe that my frequency has been risen to certain levels where if I meditate, contemplate, I can elevate my vibration in order to tap into a certain frequency to receive 
uh, uh, the energy that I need to carry on to get what I need to done. I don't believe in a mystery God. You know, you heard that before. Yeah. I believe that I can raise my frequency so I can have the ability to accomplish what I need. That sounds more real to me. So why do why don't we just say that? Why we got to say all this vibrational? No, because I don't think a lot of people, bro. I, I mean, I don't mean to touch your wisdom. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people have elevated their consciousness to understand that it's about raising your consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's not really about all the physical things because you're not the body nor the soul. You're bigger than that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're a living soul, but you ultimately are pure energy pure energy pure energy That's, you pure energy take the mask off you pure energy and so uh that was one of my that was on my oh, list somebody too, said something too. i'm sorry brother but go i want you to finish your thought but somebody said melanin yeah. too we're going to mention that too because you mentioned that but go ahead yeah, I want yeah. you to finish. talk uh, to the people it's your show okay so well we're talking about energy and it's two things that I just want to bring to our attention. One of the things that people say is that energy never dies. And then they say that we don't die. Some people say that we're, we turn into conscious energy and we fly around the earth or whatever to the moon or whatever, when we die in energy. Okay. There's a, there's a, um, a scientific rule or something somebody was saying to me and they was trying to explain energy never dies. If energy never dies, then explain, explain when I cut the light off, <coughs> then I cut it back off. If energy never dies, what, what happens? What happens? That energy didn't die. What, what you what did happened? was, broke a circuit that's all you did that energy is now harnessed elsewhere so this is what you did when you hit the switch there's a circuit you putting something blocking the energy so now the energy is harnessed right here until you hit that switch again you open the circuit that's why in your house you have a circuit breaker you're breaking the circuit the energy is not dying the energy is still there you just don't see it Soon as you soon as you hit that switch again, you connect the circuit. Bam. And so the same thing happened when we pass form or what we call dying. You follow me? The same thing happened. No. Your body no, because see, what you're missing is yeah, that's that's what happened. I understand that part. But there's something, there's an electric power plant. There's something that's producing this energy. What happens when that dies? This is the thing. This is the thing. This when the, when the electric power plant no longer can produce that energy, then what happens? This is the thing. We are so far behind. They just getting caught up with solar energy. We don't need a power plant. The sun is the power plant. You follow me? So as long as the sun exists, there is energy. Energy comes from the sun. That manufactured energy that we use from power plants is not mm -hmm. the true and living energy. The true and living energy is the sun. And we, we can see now that most people don't understand how to harness the power from the sun. The Europeans have been mastered it. If you go to any prison complex in Maryland, any prison complex, what they have done, they are running on 80% electric sun. 80%. You know what that means? Their electric bill is probably at minimum $100, $200 for a big prison complex. Why? Because they harness the energy of the sun. The sun is the true energy. What you see, so, so what man does is this. Man looks at the universe and this is what we used to do, but we gave it over to Europeans because we choose to go to sleep. Man looks at the universe and man tries to duplicate it. And so when you're looking at power plants, all you're looking at one who is duplicating the sun. It's all you're looking at. So you can scratch that and learn how to harness the energy from the sun and have the same effect. 
That's why you got solar panels. That's well, why you got. This, I mean, you still have a problem here because if the sun goes, to, then we all go. That's the point. But then but but energy go. never but, but but energy never dies. But 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 listen, energy never. If energy dies. never dies, if the sun disappears, if energy never dies, then what happens to the energy? Then that's the thing. That's the thing. So that means energy dies. No, 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 no. Because energy, no, no. you can't have energy without a fuel source. source. Has the you can't have energy without a fuel source. Something. Ask the question. Has the question. Has the sun disappeared yet? What make you think it's going somewhere? It could. No, no, no. What make you think that the sun is going somewhere? The Europeans. Well, the, the, the sun, according to science. To, from according to who science? According to the, to the white man science. Yeah, I know. That I know of. That's my point. That's my point. That's and there's many black. Life. There's a lot of African no, no, no. folks too that have, believe in. Have the sun. It's a ball the, of gas. Okay, whatever it is. The sun, but the sun is a star. Stars but, die. Hey, that's stars what die. Mean. That's what they told you. As much as we know so so much from concrete, you say you want to talk about evidence? Let's use evidence. Evidence is that the sun has been here for millions of years, and most likely. It's going to be here long after we're gone. So that's the evidence. The but a sun is a star. No, Stars that's die. What they, that's what they tell us. That's what they tell now, us. How you, now, wait a minute. Because nobody went to the sun and took a specimen. No one, no one went to a star, took a specimen of a star, and then took a specimen of the sun and made a comparison and say that they're the same. That's a third. But we, but we, but it's, but still, what, what happens is the sun is not running on its own. It's a ball of gas. Well, it's running. It's it's a it's a it's, it has to have a it has to have a fuel source in order for that energy to come. Once that fuel source, once that fuel source is gone, there's no more energy. Well, what I'm telling you is that what I'm telling you is the only thing that we're qualified to say is that the sun continues to regenerate itself. That's the only thing that we're qualified to say. It has been re regenerating itself for millions of years. For millions of years. That's the only evidence that we really have. That it has been regenerating itself for millions and millions and millions of years. Therefore, okay, look, look, therefore let's not even, let's like even talk Jesus about the sun because the sun, because the sun has been around for that's, millions of years. So, so that's our evidence. Jesus coming? Is Jesus coming? But look at this. We said that energy never dies. I can't use the sun as an example because it's for millions of years. If energy never dies, then why do we throw batteries out? Why do we have to keep filling our car up with gasoline? Because I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this. The energy was depleted from the battery and it was put into something else that carries that energy. That's it. And what that is, is that? that? But that is an imitation energy too. Once that energy, once that, okay, let me give you an example. The energy of your phone, right? The energy of your phone. Once your phone dies, the mm -hmm. energy went somewhere else. It didn't die. It just went somewhere else. Now, you, you don't have a GPS on where the energy went. You don't have a GPS. You don't, I mean, so, so the thing is, is that, uh, when you're looking at natural energy and you're looking at manufactured energy, it appears. Let me give you an example. When water evaporates and it dries, is that the end all be all? No. When the no. water evaporates, guess where the water goes? You can't see it, but it goes right up. Water, water, water. We know that water, water is a fluid. We know that it can take various this forms. What this is what I'm saying. Solid. It's a solid, it's a gas, it's a liquid. What I'm telling you is that when water... You can't use that in an example of, of, of energy. Listen, energy does, it, it doesn't work the same example. way. Listen what I'm saying. When you get water and people say that water dries, in fact, water doesn't dry. Water actually, what they would call evaporate or it turns into a mist. It returns to its space. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So the right. same thing with water. People think water dries. Water do not dry. It, it evaporates. Returns, it evaporates and, re, and it returns to its space. You know what I'm saying? Whether it, be, whether it be held in the clouds and come back down, whatever the case may be. So what I'm saying is energy is the same way. 
Energy don't die. It only returns to its source. But you don't have a GPS on your eye to, 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 to follow that. Okay, if, if that's true, where does it go? We understand water. It evaporates and it evaporates. It's a liquid. It's a, it's a solid. We understand the water concept. I'm about to give it to you. What is it? The 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 the, the energy of that we're talking about it returns back to the universe where it came from. All energy comes from this universe that we live in, but from the sun, from the moon. Everything has energy from the sun and reflect it off other things to give it life. Everything in, in, is on this planet. Without this, the sun is the source of all life. The sun is the source of all life. So the, the sun, everything reflects the energy of the sun. Everything. Everything on the planet Earth. That's why mm -hmm. if you take the sun away, their life is gone. It's gone. So... The problem is, is that we have taken so many steps backwards in our understanding that we don't really get it that the sun is the source of all life. You, the plants, the everything. Absolutely. Everything. So what I'm so, saying. So quite naturally, quite naturally, quite naturally, some energies as we know it will return back to the source of which is came. But we as human beings, the energy that we have, we're saying that our energy is a unique, same but unique and a more evolved type of energy. And I don't believe that goes to the sun. I don't know. I don't know where the energy goes, but we know that energy doesn't die. Then that's just a fact because the nature shows us this. When you mm -hmm. look at nature shows us that all things regenerates itself. You even regenerate yourself, whether it's through a child or whether it's through, and as the Buddhists would say, birthing again, coming back. You don't believe in that either? No. When you, when you, when you, when you die, what, what happens? You just rot. That's the end. You think you're the body? That's it? That's it. Dang. That's that's it. There is no evidence to suggest anything other than that. You didn't know anything about this life before you came here, and that's the way that you're gonna go out, whether you like it or not. And, you know, you can have all these but, stories but that we want. Nature, but when you look at nature, right? You look at nature reproduces itself. Nature appears that, to but that's die not you. and come back. But but, but we're part you. of the you. But we're part of the greater part, though. Yeah, but that's not you. If that's the case, my father never died. That's my true. father is still alive. I, I agree with that. But I my father is gone. My parents are gone. No, so he's gone to you. No, he's, he's gone. gone. But, no, no, he's gone. Ain't <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about that. Okay, okay, he is okay. Zippo. So let me say this. If you take a tree, right? You take a tree. And a squirrel take an acorn, right? And that acorn is taken by a squirrel a few miles away. Or you take a tree and a tree take that and a seed is taken by a bird is eaten by a bird and that seed is taken miles away. That seed could be far off in the distance somewhere else with no relation or understanding where the connection is to its source. But that don't take away the fact that that seed is from that same source just because you don't know what happened that don't change the fact that don't that don't, what i'm trying to say is just because just that's because, realistic that's that realistic what you're fact. saying now you show me the same thing in real time using human beings you can't do it no the reason why the reason why i'm unable to do that is because some of the enigmas of this journey makes the journey intriguing and makes the journey, it gives the journey life and interest. So as we have in this talk, the mm -hmm. man need stimulants, need to stimulate their mind. You feel what I'm saying? And yes. so man needs 
challenges like this in order to develop into their greatest self. You follow what I'm saying? Man needs these things. These things, man has been doing this for what we're doing right now. They did this in ancient Egypt. They did this in ancient Greece. They did this uh, 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 in ancient Mexico. What we're doing now, we're looking at the possibilities of man. You see what I'm saying? The moment mm -hmm. that you don't begin to stop looking at the possibilities of man, you begin to die. So the only thing we're doing is examine the possibilities. What is the possibilities? Do you believe that when we go into the ground, we rot and that's it, that's all? Or do you believe that we're bigger than this flesh that we're traveling in? You believe when you can show when you can show clear, convincing, and overwhelming evidence to those things that you're speaking about, then it's not real. It's not reality. The, the, the example that you gave of the squirrel and taking the acorn somewhere else, we understand that. That's that's realistic. Right. But there's no evidence that my daddy is somewhere floating around in space. I'll see you later, son. You know, one of these days. There's no evidence of, of any of that. Well, yeah, that's, well, not, well, that's not well, that's, that's back, not real. Well, that's back, that's back to the point of the mystery God. You know what I'm saying? Um right. we're not we're not gonna go and try to be and project the idea that someone is floating around in space, that someone is a spook or and things like that. But what I will say is, and I always use this example, if you was to walk in your house and somebody was in there before you walked in there, you could feel the energy of that. You know that and I know that. You follow what I'm saying? You know that if somebody came into your house and disturbed something in your house, just because you see it, it don't mean that you can identify exactly what it is, but in the subconscious mind, it's embedded there. And then you start saying, man, hold up. Who was just in here? Mm -hmm. somebody, somebody, you feel that energy. Well, the same energy that you feel in somebody's in your house, it could even be a loved one. You can feel the presence of somebody in your house. If you raise, the, the concept is, if you raise to your etheric being, or your higher self, you'll be able to be in touch with those who are energy outside of the body. Because mm -hmm. you definitely can touch those who have energy within the body. You can tell when somebody been in there. Like, for instance, I went to, I went to the, uh, uh, Unity Hall today, me and my son. And when I get there, subconsciously, I didn't know immediately something was out of place. Something was out of place. And so I'm like, I stopped for a minute and I could feel the presence of somebody. And when I really examined the situation, I could see the front uh, uh, had been cleaned up and must was the city because it's abandoned house nearby. Uh, but I could feel the presence. What I'm telling you, that same thing that you feel it's the same thing you'll be able to feel with your loved ones. But we're not looking for that because you walk into your house and you're curious about what's going on in your house. That's why you can feel that more directly as opposed to your people that has gone on before you. You don't believe in that. And so therefore you have no contact with that. That's just how it works. It's the same energy. You ain't see nobody in your house. You can feel it though. Well, are you, are you confusing energy with your natural instincts like I said for instance uh i told my i told my baby brother you can take my car i do not want people other people in my vehicle when i got to my vehicle something told me somebody was i even guess how many people was in the car and he said yeah. but it had nothing to do with energy it's just no. It's just a, a, a instinct that nobody, you have. No, uh, let me tell you. You know, something. just like if you're walking down the street, if you're walking down the street in the dark, you can feel. Uh, I feel like somebody watching me. That's energy. You can feel those. But is that energy, or that's just a that's just a natural instinct no, coming from energy. from that's your brain? Energy. Let me tell you something. That's energy. That's energy because your brain tap into the frequency of that which is watching you. When you got into that car, you can feel that energy on each seat that was there. That's not no instinct. You're trying to chalk it up as instinct, but that's not instinct. You could feel each energy. That impression on each seat in there, you could calculate that. What, that what, was what instinct. Is... instinct would say somebody's in the car. 
Now, whether you can narrow it down, you can, instinct would be, somebody was in my car and you don't have nothing conclusive. What, what, is, what, is, what is the basic uh, definition of, of energy? You know? Well, we just talk about a life force, something that gives and keep on giving, something that you can't see with the eyes, but you can feel with the soul or with the spirit or the me. The immortal yeah, so, part of you. I'm just giving, I'm just throwing it around. Right, right, right. The, but the immortal I, part of you. Yeah, so the part I, of I you don't, that's I don't, immortal. Immortal. See, I don't, I'm, I'm not into, I, I'm not into the immortal thing. That's a religious That's not necessarily thing. true. Well, I'm for me, you, I, that's the best way I can describe it. Right. There's no, there's nobody that I know of that's immortal. I've never seen, <laughs> you know, I don't know nobody. No, Everybody that I know of lived and died. Listen to what I just said. You, mm -hmm. we, we was talking about that energy doesn't die. So energy right. is immortal. Right. Energy would it's be immortal. immortal. Yeah. But I'm so saying that I'm saying that energy dies. Look, I like how Jeremy put this. Thank you. Anything I'm saying that, I'm know, saying that energy dies because of this. Also, if, 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 if the energy, if whatever it is, if I can't use it no more, and it disappears and it goes out in the universe somewhere, whatever, for I'm concerned, it's dead. It don't, don't exist for me no more. No, but water but is different. Water is different because it's just going through a process. It's it, 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 it is able to change shapes, and I'm able to use it, whether it's a liquid I, or a gas. Let me say this, or, yeah. You just said something. Let me catch this. You say energy goes out to the universe and you can't use it no more. No, yeah. no. You what you just did was you just took a part of something and made it the whole. So in other words, you can still use that energy, but the part that you have used is associated with the part that you're going to use. In other words, if, if I take a spoon, you hear me? If I take a spoon mm -hmm. and I put it in, what is the nearest lake beside you? Mississippi River. The Mississippi River. If I take a spoon and scoop up some water from the Mississippi River, just because it's in this spoon, don't make it not the Mississippi River. Exactly. If, you, if you grab a spoon of some water from the Mississippi River, it's the same water. It's the same Mississippi River. Whether I throw this back in the river and you keep yours, that don't change the fact that is still the Mississippi River. So just because a piece of the energy goes in one direction and you need to get another piece of the energy from another direction or what you would consider another source, don't change the fact that it's the same energy. That might be too much. It doesn't change the fact. Just because the energy was the, you feel as though it's depleted. You think it's depleted. But no, well, as far as, as, far as our again. reality is concerned, it's depleted. You know, you giving physical, you giving these physical examples, but you're not giving us an example of the actual this energy. Where does it go to? That's what I'm saying. I told you I'm not I'm not qualified to say exactly where it harnesses itself to. Right. This I is why that the energy of the sun. I did say that the energy of right. the sun returns back to its source. Yeah, That's this is saying. why a lot of the things that we talk about. I like about, what S. Miller say. There are different forms of energy. Yeah, right. There's different forms of energy, but, but it's connected it, to the whole. It dies. Thing. It dies. Your battery, your, you call your battery died. That energy just been depleted. That's all. You, right. But, but it returns to its source. Once it, yeah, once it, right. out, it returns to its source. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. Everything, everything on the planet Earth, everything, seen and unseen, returns to its source. That's what nature tells you. Well, actually, nature tells me that everything is recycled. That's what nature tells I like, me. I like, I like what he said. Does the water cycle die? Is that a question for me? Yeah. Does the water cycle die? 
it's it's not alive with us. It it does it. It just changes liquid. This this thing that we call water, it just changes forms. That and and that's what we that, and that's the same point. That's the same. So point. you're saying that you energy is just point. changes that's, form. Absolutely. So I'm asking you, just like I the water is changing form, but you this, can't you can't no. show me these different can, various forms. I can tell you the manifestation of different forms of energy. The tr mm -hmm. a tree is a manifestation of a different form of energy. A dog, a cat, you, mm -hmm. all living things are different variations and manifestations of energy. But all living things. So the look, other look part me. of this, this, this your father question, lives in you. The other part of this question is: you all do you also believe in in conscious energy? Conscious energy. How would you describe that? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, from my understanding, conscious, conscious, conscious energy, energy. Conscious, conscious energy is is is. I guess you 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 die, and uh, you're still able to. I mean, you're still able to think. You turn into some kind of energy form, and you're able to. You still keep your brain. You know, whatever you thinking process that you have in your brain, and you fly around the universe to plan to plan. I guess I I, I don't know what conscious energy. Know. Hold up, I, I want to get into another one that you said, man. We're gonna go on this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you said that. I think we covered that. Um this is why it's called belief. This is why it's called belief, because uh it cannot it cannot be backed up, it cannot be verified in the in, in our our world here. You know, it's it's a it, it's belief and it makes us feel good. And a lot of these things and these teachings come because they were manufactured for us to give us self-esteem, to make us feel smart. And a lot of us just don't want to die. Let me say this, though. Let me say this. That's not necessarily true. Our ancestors looked at the universe and they looked at how the universe functioned and then they articulated our life cycle as that same function. Like a tree never dies. As long as a tree produces seeds, it never dies. Yeah, but the Even, individual, oh, oh, the individual oh, 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 oh. dies. Hear what I'm saying? Hear what I'm saying? Even when the tree goes into the ground and it goes to rotten bark, it is still alive. It never dies. If you take a steel truck, the truck was that came out of the earth and was manipulated and turned into hard steel. Mm -hmm. That steel decays and goes back into the earth. It's a living thing. As long as it deteriorates, it could, it's still life in it because nothing, uh, uh, something from nothing leaves nothing. In other words, it goes back into the earth and now it becomes a life source once again. Everything on top of the earth becomes a life source of everything in the earth. And so our ancestors was able to see that and say, there's nothing dying. Nothing is ever really dying. That is a figment of our imagination. That's a figment of our imagination because even this bottle right here, it came out of the earth. This yes. came out of the earth. And when it goes back into the earth, whether we understand how it gives life back to the earth, it does. It does. And so human beings are the same way. Regardless if we understand the complexities of it, that doesn't make the, that doesn't change the fact. The whole universe is living. It's a living thing. It never dies. Nothing in the universe ever dies. Nothing. That's a false narrative. Nothing. I don't care what it is. The, the 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 screen that I'm looking with, that that I'm looking at, everything on the earth came out of the earth, and everything that we see on the earth will go back to the earth and start another life cycle. So every part of you that is a part of life never dies because there is no true death. That is a myth, and the universe tells us that. Think about it. Think about it slow. Everything in the universe. Even when we think it's dead, it's giving life to something. Therefore, it's never really dead. As long as it can contribute to life, it never really dies. 
And human beings are the same way. Now, to try to figure out the phenomenon of where we go, what it do, that's something else. That's something else. But there is nothing on the earth that doesn't go back to the earth and give life to the earth. Nothing, regardless of what the European scientists say. Well, that's true. What you just said is true. But we as individuals, you so, gone. So, so what I'm saying is we are a part of the universe. That doesn't change for us. Either. Do you know how we many understand it? Do you know how many trees have died over the millions of years? How many did they, squirrels? Did and they really skunks? die? Yeah, did they, they really did. Die? Those those individuals came no. here, spent their, their time, and they're gone. That's this it's over. The, that tree that you say died went back into the earth and was reborn into something else over time. It became something well, else. Well, see. The, the, the tree that died, okay, the, the tree fall over, okay, uh, some of the wood ants eat a little bit of it, and then some other, some mushrooms eat some, on some of it, it ends up going different what, places what, or, or whatever. It, it doesn't matter. Those, those chemicals, matter. The point those that chemicals are, are recycled. They don't turn into a brand new individual no, no, no. creature. No, 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 no. What I'm telling you is that it can only give life if it is life. So regardless of what you're talking about, it goes into this, it goes in that, people eat this, people do that. It can, but my, The point that I'm making is it can only give life if it is life. It can well, only we give life. So, so, you're, so we get that point, right? Yeah. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is that our ancestors not only looked at that, but they looked at how the universe kept its course. They look at our rivers, go into the sea, come back into the rivers and the lakes, and everything keeps its course. The universe keeps its course. Life cycle keeps its so course. Mm -hmm. So, so you may be looking at like, okay, this splitting, the, it's splitting the atoms where uh, uh, the, the 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 bird goes into the ground, and then the, the bird can feed this, and be, but it's the energy that we're talking about. You see what I'm saying? And so our ancestors looked at this and say, well, if nothing in the universe actually dies, then it, that doesn't exclude us. We can't actually die. That's a European concept. That's a, do you do you realize? Let me tell you, how, let me tell you something. Do you realize that at least 60% of the planet believe in reincarnation? The only people that don't. Is mostly Christians, European Christians. Did you know that? No, Did I didn't you know, know that. that. No. Did you know that? Majority of the planet, majority of the planet believe in a rebirth of some sort. The Bible even teach of a rebirth. But the only people that don't believe that is Catholicism and people that follow the thought of the new wave Christian thought. Six, let me see, majority of the planet. That's that that should tell us something right there. That should tell most <laughs> cultures, mo, no, most <clears throat> cultures in Africa, Chinese cultures, Indian cultures, anybody who have an olive, whether light or dark olive complexion, believe in the rebirth. That's an overwhelming majority of the planet Earth. Now, we're talking about millions of years. We're talking about million years of studying the universe to come up with this concept. Mm -hmm. This is not, I mean, the, the concept of you die and you go and that's it, that's fairly new. That's a European concept. That's a new concept. So, well, what what you're is, talking, uh... so what you're talking is a European concept. No, it's, I, I didn't talk to no European about. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is that is literally a European concept. Before the before uh, uh, the development of Christian thought, very few believe that. Very, you very just few. you just hit the you just hit the what they call the nail on the head, whatever. Very few believed it. So what I'm saying, do you believe, believe your ants? Do you do you trust your ancestors or do you trust the European? I trust myself. 
What I'm saying is this. I trust my ancestors and See, I would work out. I would, no, listen, listen, listen. I would try to work out the equation with my ancestors. You feel me? I would try to work out that equation once I find out that the other is a European equation. I would try to work out the equation with my ancestors because my ancestors have proven to be here longer. My ancestors have proven to have a history here longer. And although we act a fool today, although we act crazy today, all, although we act crazy out of line today, our ancestors have been on the planet Earth longer than anybody. So I would rather evaluate that. You know what I'm saying? That would just mm -hmm. like, uh, 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 to, if, if, if you want to trust a car, you know what I'm saying? You want to go with the one that make the most efficient car. If, if you got the money to, other than that, you just go to the junkyard and get a piece of junk and just hope you make it there. You know what I'm saying? But if you are able to tap into the wisdom and the knowledge of your ancestors, I would use that as my measuring stick before I used anything else. Then that doesn't discount the European concept. That doesn't disqualify. That doesn't even disqualify their concept. But when you got a people that been here millions of years, I would rather evaluate that first before I just discount anything. Right. And then I would trust myself to make a proper decision. Right. And and uh, they got it wrong. They got it wrong. They spooky. Also, the, a big majority of the planet, the ancient people, because they did not understand the reality of life. They don't understand the reality of things. They got it wrong. And they also made up stories. They also made up fairy tales and, and fantasy stories to make up, to give reason for what they did not understand. There's no, we understand the recycle of life. We understand that. There's no evidence. There's no evidence. There's no credible proof of no individual waiting somewhere in the heavens, turning to conscious energy, flying around, there's no, there's no evidence that you have a soul or a spirit inside yourself. When you die, this mysterious spirit, matter of fact, this mysterious spirit that's supposed to be inside of us, how does it operate? How does, does it eat? What, 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 what feeds it? How, do, how does it operate? How does it, 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 it function? It, they, they never said those different things. Ancient people were stupid. Let me ask you a question. Ancient, Why? look, ancient people believed in human sacrifice. They would take that, you up on a, that, a mountain and cut your heart out to pleasing some God. Brother, so, you know, and, and you, you, you I, some, you some of your ancestors brush. was doing that also, sir. Absolutely. But you can't paint them all with a broad brush. You had some that was demonstrating that and you have other that was demonstrating high science. We choose to examine the ones that was demonstrating high science to examine so we can better make this journey a little bit more easier. That's all. Okay, so in high science, show me where individual you die disappear and we're gonna see you again another time somewhere again where is this at let me, in, let me in your high science. maybe maybe we can't find that in high science but maybe you and i can tap into the frequency and we can develop it and bring it to the people do you have that type of confidence in yourself maybe we can develop develop the high science and figure out how we can bring this explanation to the people well, for me, because every generation builds off another generation. The part yeah. that our ancestors did is done. And if they haven't brought that to us in the fullest extent of the understanding, then it's up to us to try to bring it to the full extent of the understanding. Well, for me, I understand that a lot of things I will never know in my lifetime. Yeah, but why I, would you? I, I, I would never would, know. Why would, why would you accept? that there's a lot of things that you will never know as opposed to strive to understand the things that you can know. No, I I, I, I would do that, but I'm not going to make up a lie. No, no. See, I, these I, things I, are fairy tales and lies that we're making I, up. And oh, I want to touch on another thing that you said. You said that people made up stories. A lot of the stories was told in allegory in order to have people to ponder upon because the brain, again, the mind needs challenges in order to become strong. 
So this is why you got math equations. This is why you got comprehension in school. The math, the brain needs these things to become strong. The brain is a muscle. You see what I'm saying? And the 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 the, the, the electric the electric pulses that goes to the brain, it needs to be challenged. And so our ancestors developed these stories of allegory in order to challenge the brain to pull back the cover to try to superimpose the a deeper meaning of it. These things are for challenges for developmental process. These things are not to be always taken so literal. And one thing about the Bible is the Bible it, 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 it presents a challenge that some of it is literal history, some of it is allegory, and some of it is metaphor. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the simple-minded person would take it all straight across as one thing. But the more the more elevated person would say, and when I say elevated, the one that really pay attention to detail, what they would do is they would try to figure out just what is allegory, just what is metaphor. Just what is literal. And so this helps the brain. This gives us life. Challenges gives us life. All challenges give us life. So without challenges, see, see, you see, you, 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 you're one who say, well, man, forget that stuff. That's stuff phony. And you miss the you miss the uh the chance to even challenge yourself. And if it doesn't mean nothing after you study it, then throw it away in the time in history trash can. But 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 in fact, you will be amazed at some of these allegory stories that you pull back the layers and you see things in a whole new light. And a lot of things and a lot of these stories that are allegory of yesterday, they're playing out before us today because mm -hmm. nothing is new under the sun. So if you understand the allegory and you understand the metaphor, there'd be something right in front of your face that you see that you can avoid or that you also can embrace and make your life just a little bit better. Those that's what our ancestors did. All of these stories are not fairy tales. Europeans took fairy tales and hid stories in them. But our stories, many of the allegory stories are, are great importance and of great significance. I, I don't see this is what I don't understand here too. We have people and we talk about this high science. We keep talking about the high science and they understood the, the universe and we uh, uh, got and they had all this technology and, 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 and whatever. But when Africa, because I know that's what you're saying, you're saying that you, you, you're ref, uh, referring to, to African people, right? You're not talking about the Aboriginal people. Are you including them too? When uh -huh. you speak about the ancestors, you talk about Africans and Aboriginals, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Pretty much. If your science is as high as claimed, then how come your weaponry didn't rise up to that science so that you would have the weapons that could give the Europeans a run for the money when the Europeans came? But you got all this other technology but you don't have no technology. And even during the time, like during World War II, they were developing weapons as World War II was going on from year to year. Even in, in the Civil War, they were steady developing technology. So why wasn't these persons with all their high science and all this kind of stuff, why wasn't they able to develop weaponry to counter what the enemy had? If they got all this high science and understood uh, all these, the, the energy that flies through the universe <laughs> and all this other stuff. Where was their weapons at? Well, it's a saying in the more science tip of America is that due to that we didn't honor our forefathers and foremothers, basically, we have been reduced to slaves. In other words, we did not, once, many a times that we've been in power, we neglected to maintain that power in the way that we treated one another and the way that we fought against one another. And so the more that we fight against one another, the more we weaken our power. And the more that we weaken our power, the easier it is for one to come in. And so while we're fighting amongst one another throughout history, while we're fighting amongst one another throughout history, whom that you call an enemy 
is now circling the wagons. Mm -hmm. They're circling the wagons. So while we continue to fight against one another and this, what you call the enemy circling the wagons, we have no time to develop weapons. See, this is years and years. This is hundreds of years. Let me give you an example. North Africa, for example. North Africa was conquered by the, uh, the Romans. You follow me? If I'm not mistaken, the Romans. Now, when they conquered North Africa, or was it the Greeks? Romans, Greeks, whatever. If I mess it up, don't worry. Europeans. It was conquered by Europeans. Far before the Moors invaded Spain, they had already conquered that area. And the way that they were able to conquer that area, some of it was they came as friends. Some of them came to Kryptonomus, say Greeks. Thank you, Crypt. Some of them went to Egypt. And again, I tell you this, this color code beef thing is fairly new. Uh -huh. They went, they went to Egypt. They learned. They went to North Africa. They learned. Ultimately, they begin to conquer from the graciousness of who we are. Secondly, secondly, they would see the inter-conflict of our people and they will use that of to conquer even further. So my, 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 my answer is the same as before. As long as we are in fighting, we don't have the ability to develop a formidable defense. That's that's even today. Like like my thing is this: I could care less if you are, if you are Hebrew, Israelite, if you are more, if you're in the nation of Islam. I think we can still have a conversation, a, a respectable conversation. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And we can move on and build something even in the midst of these conversations. The problem is, is when I disagree with a Hebrew Israelite, not a Hebrew Israelite, because I don't disagree with my Hebrew Israelite brother, just, just say a brother of comedic science or black mm -hmm. power, the first thing they want to do is kill you. They want to kill you. <laughs> That's the first thing that they think about. You see what I'm saying? They can't intellectualize their disagreement. You know what I'm saying? Nor mm -hmm. can they stand on that which they say they believe. And so because they're mentally weak, the first thing that they will start saying, they'll start coming with aggression. You see what I'm saying? That's a problem in our community. And as long as we are like that, as long as we are like that, we would never be able to develop a formidable defense. Never, never. All, listen, in ancient Egypt, everybody would meet to ancient Egypt to discuss the possibilities of man, the possibilities of the universe. People will go to India and have circles and debate the possibilities of man and the, the potential of man, the potential of the universe. When they left, none of them thought about killing each other. Even though how they disagreed, none of them thought like that. But we are so far gone that the moment that we disagree, the first thing that we talk about is, I'm going to pull up. <laughs> I'm going to pull up. And again, as long as we are like that, and we've been like this for years. Maybe they didn't use the term pull up. We've been like this for years. As long as we like that, we could never develop a formidable defense. And that's, and that's the same thing to your answer back then. We wasn't looking. I mean, we wasn't looking to battle everybody. We wasn't looking to conquer everybody. We wasn't looking to do that as an as a ancient people. We wasn't looking to do that. And so our God was down. That's all. Our God was down. Mm -hmm. And today, our God continues to be down. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I will say this also. It's getting late here, but. We're going to come um, back and do it again. You know, I enjoy our conversation. Oh, yeah. Now, even let's say, for instance, okay, whether they are Africans or Aboriginal, these melanated people got a severe problem 
And that problem is they are extremely tribal and they are extremely tribal. They don't view themselves as the same. Everybody was in their own little tribes doing their own little thizzy and they really didn't care <clears throat> about what other people was doing. Matter of fact, when Europeans start showing up or whatever, the enemy starts showing up and another tribe got jumped on or whatever was catching hell by the Europeans, they didn't really care because they probably didn't like them anyway. They don't see themselves. But and you're as right, the brother. Hey, brother, yeah. you are one thousand percent correct. I, I keep saying that we never looked at uh, um <coughs> things from a color perspective. That's fairly mm -hmm. new. Even 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 when you look at European tribal tribal a uh, uh, conflict, the the earth is a tribal. I mean, we live in nations now. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a new era of time now. But it's the same thing. It's just tribal on steroids. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's, it's just tribal on steroids. But the point is, is that European tribes warred against each other. European right. nations warred against each other. And so when they seen uh, uh, the European warring against a tribal nation of Africa, of course, that's not their business because they wasn't wired like that. You know what I'm saying? We're only wired with this color thing is because we've been subjected by the pale skin people of Europe. But that's the, the we have been rewired to take everything like that. And rightfully so. We should continue to look at it as a color thing because that's where it has come to. It has come to that now. You know what I'm saying? And it's not going nowhere. It is a complexion thing now. But when the European would come on the African continent, no, no, no. They didn't look at it like that because there's never was like that. Because the Moors or dark Africans have been in Europe for thousands of years mm -hmm. around Europeans. They ruled Europe for thousands of years around Europeans. And there was never a color thing. That's a new phenomenon, I'm telling you. Google, anybody in here, Google when the Moors ruled Europe. Now, and of course, everybody wasn't for uh, uh, the phenotype more, but Europeans called everybody of dark skin Moors at that time. And you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see that when the Moors ruled Europe, you'll be able to see that it wasn't a color or a color class thing. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't that. Mm -hmm. That is fairly new. And so now that it is right there, we have yet to catch up with the game. All we do is cry. Like, like for instance, my next show coming up is Black Slaves Surprise and Mad at Biden and Rogan. How are you going to be mad because Biden want to give out crack pipes? <laughs> How are you going to be mad because Rogan call you the N-word? Everybody making these videos about Biden and Rogan. Everybody making these videos. Biden giving out crack pipes. Rogan called them N-word. And they want the European to pat them on the head. Don't call me that. Don't call me that. Please. But that's where we're at now. And we have yet to accept the fact that that's where we're at. And it ain't going nowhere. Nope, not no time soon. So, so until we come together, that don't mean come together, worship like I do, serve the God that I serve. That don't mean none of that. That means until we see each other, as you said, as the same, and we are under the same oppression, we would never be able to work together. Exactly. We would never be able to work together. Never. You know what I'm saying? Because we, as you said it, you said it the best. We don't see each other as the same. No. You know, be deep down in some more's heart, they see uh, uh, you as a black person. Deep down in some Hebrew hearts, they see me as a more, an African. Mm -hmm. Deep down in some comedic brother house, they see me as a more, and I'm different from them. You know what I'm saying? Deep down in some other hearts, they see people as a Christian that don't know nothing. But my thing is that. Regardless of where we at on this journey, each each part of this journey is a step. And if I'm on this step, let me be on my step until I get to the step where you at. Mm -hmm. And if you're on this step, 
then be on your step until I meet you or be on this step until you get to where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? It's called Absolutely. religious tolerance. Religious tolerance. Because if we can tolerate each and every one of our beliefs and our understanding, then we'll be able to work together. Exactly. I, can't, I don't have to make you like me. You don't have to make me like you. And and it's not even about like. It's not even about like. It's about do you really want to solve this problem once and for all? If you want to solve this problem once and for all, then I need you, whether I like you or not. Look at Grand we Pooper. We need Grand, each other. Grand Pooper say, you ain't no more. I say, come and debate me, Grand Pooper. Talk about gmail.com. But just be respectful. You see, you ain't no more, but I bet you he will not email me to debate me on the concept. I guarantee you. I would, I would, I would, a dollar to a donut that this guy would not send me an email to debate me on mm -hmm. the concept. And that's the thing. We will put out stuff and say things that we can't stand on and then get mad mm -hmm. if we do a debate and if you get beat in a debate. <laughs> but oh, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing, Angel stepped up. I want to say mm -hmm. one more thing before you go. All right. You said that. Hold up. Where is that? I thought I had it. Oh, last but not least, let me get like 10 minutes of this. <laughs> you said that the sun, were you saying that the sun was not the enemy of Europeans? You said the sun enemy of white folks. Yeah, that, that's another thing that people say. I just want to get more understanding on, on that. I hear people say that the sun is the enemy to, to Caucasian people. Now, what is true is if they stay out in the sun and because they don't have melanin, if they don't, if they stay out in the sun a certain period of time, yes, they are, you know, they're more prone to get skin cancer and things of this nature, whatever. But at the same time, Anybody that that is is exposed to direct sunlight for a certain period of time, you and you're gonna have problems. Matter of fact, the sun can kill any of us. I don't care how dark you are. Anybody that stands out in the sun, direct sunlight, you go out there, that sun will kill you. Every animal, the only thing that I know on this planet that can handle direct sunlight like that is plants, trees, and things. Any other animal, they dig in the ground. They, what, about, what, about they, they all, what, what about all of our people that live closer to the equator for thousands and millions of years? They're not going to stand out in direct direct they sunlight. Do. Nobody's nobody's going to be out in direct. You got to put something over your head. You're going to have to do something to protect yourself from direct yeah, sunlight. We got some. We got some ancestors that blue black from being. Yeah, but they don't. I see them. They're not. They don't just outright. Just sit out in the well, sun. Well, they, well, 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 I don't think nobody just stand in the middle of the sun for twenty four hours. Right. But but the European, the European don't go, don't got to stand out there twenty four hours. He can stand out there for twenty minutes and and suffer from uh, skin cancer. Yeah, but I mean, you but that's can. a lot. I mean, that won't that's not simply because he don't have any, he don't have the the the, the melanin like that. But so, so you have so Caucasian I, people who who live in deserts. They conquer deserts. Where if the if the sun is the enemy to the white folk, then that means they Where? could not conquer no, or live no. in the desert. But that's why they wear the loose clothes like the people in the Arab culture. They yeah. wear the loose clothes and they do all that. But I'm talking about they ain't they ain't dressing with no loincloth in no desert, not no European, like our people would do. But then also at the same time, put us in a situation where we don't really belong and we have problems, like we suffer from sickle cell anemia. Yeah, yeah. See what I'm but saying? I, but 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 my thing is, I think I think a lot of this stuff that we suffer from is engineered, and we have we have yet again while we're fighting mm -hmm. each other, we don't have the have the have the ability to to put up a formidable defense. In other words, we could have scientists working in our behalf to see where sickle cell come from. We could have mm -hmm. scientists working in our behalf to see where a uh, 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 lupus come from. You know what I'm saying? 
We, but we don't have no scientists working in our behalf. We have scientists working for the United States government or working for practices, but they're trained by the United States government and they don't work to look at that there's a possible connection to a target of our people. So we mm -hmm. say, okay, sickle cell anemia is with us. Well, hold up, hold up, wait a minute. Is it is the sickle cell anemia uh, genetic? It's genetic, but where did it come from? You see what I'm saying? Who, what scientists have done some research to find out why it affects us primarily? What where's the research for 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 uh, 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 um as I just said, what I just named? Um, let me just say the diseases that affect us. We don't have no scientists working in our behalf to right. look at the probability that this has been introduced in our community. None, not one. You understand what I'm saying? Lupus. Absolutely. There is not it's one. It's the same thing with uh, so we don't so have. <clears throat> so again, while we're fighting each other, we can never form a formidable defense to anything. Anything. That's Let me why. Tell you the truth. Yeah. Well, that's why the concept of of uh, Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign taking control of a state. You also take control of the of the state lab laboratory. You have to have something to work with where you can bring in your scientists and you can work on your own vaccines. You can have opportunity to do something for yourself. But again, like you say, this cannot happen because we're all divided up. Why don't we have a, a, a conference? Why don't we have, uh, uh, you want to debate? Why don't we debate on the things we agree upon? Well, well let me tell you something. Most of our people, uh, no, no, most of our yeah. people are super indoctrinated, bro. You yes. know what I mean, most of our people are super indoctrinated. They don't even know that they not function on their own mind. And that, and that song where I say, "Who didn't got up in your head, rent mm. free," the European, the oppressive European, is living in most of our people head, rent free. In other words, they got their feet up on a coffee table. You see what I'm saying? And this is yeah. people with unks, people with fezzes, people with red, black, and green fez, uh, 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 right. flags, people with crosses. Like, like you can, if you tear back the layers, man, they're not thinking in their real mind. No. They're not Impossible. thinking in their real mind. You see what I'm saying? So there's no way. That many. Let me tell you something. Angel Snup Snup, most of our people are so struggling to pay the next bill. That they that they could care less. You know I'm saying that they would they could care less about a conference of what we can work together. It is what it is. They could care less. You know what I'm saying they all they, they worried about the next bill. And even like I, I could tell you this, when I was I remember years ago, I used to go to million dollar homes or half a million dollar homes, if you will. Somebody would see a flyer. Somebody would see an ad in the newspaper. They would call my company. I would go to half a million dollars homes. And many of them would want a payment plan to put a hot water heater in their house. You know what I'm saying? Because they would, they would use their money in such a way that it looked like they had money, but their money was tied up in everything. Whether it was the mortgage, the nice car. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Other little bills, other investments. Half of them didn't didn't really have what you thought they had that they could just dig and just go at it. You know what I'm saying? And so they are struggling to pay credit card bills, leasing a car, the mortgage. You know what I'm saying? They don't have nothing. Many people don't have nothing. They look like they do. You know what I'm saying? So. We we struggling. Our people are struggling, and as long as we struggling and fighting against one another, we can't we can't form a formidable defense. But brother, take me out. We got to do this again. We got to do course. this again, brother. I don't want to hold course. you up too much long. I know it's bad. You pass your big time, and you're like <laughs> seventy nine. <laughs> you know I mean? But yeah, brother. So we're gonna got we got a few more that we gotta talk about next week when we come back, bro. I appreciate you. And I need y'all to go to uh Angel Snuff. Now, brother, why do you don't put your link in here? I don't know. For some reason it won't pop up. I, I try to it? put it in there. <laughs> it won't pop up. 
Well, you got to put it put it in the, put in the comment section next. Next time I'm gonna start putting it in the uh, okay. and underneath the uh the show thing. Where, but I'm easy to find right now. I don't even like to even put it out there because you're <laughs> flagging my channels. <laughs> Why are they flagging you? What you do? That was that's Sonetta. Sonetta did that, man. But why? I don't know. He's just a dirty guy. I don't know what to say about that piece of yeah. trash. Yeah, I'll be trying to figure out why they why they keep flagging you. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I don't care if they keep flagging me. You know what I'm saying? It don't make me no difference. You know what I mean? I mean, I they take my channels. Uh, I've, I've had uh, over 100 channels taken down over the year. Man, mm -hmm. we got to get you a channel on TalkaBay.com then. Yeah, we're going to have to do that. Yeah, we got we got to get you a channel because talkabay.com. I'm going. I'm gonna be back on that soon, man. I just I'm just trying to get this work done. But talkabay.com, you could develop your own channel just like this on YouTube. Yeah, we're gonna have to do that. We're gonna have to. I mean, we are getting the numbers. We are getting the people. We're gonna have to get to the point where we don't have to worry about this garbage. You know, I, you, you making videos like what we're doing here, and then they flag it down. I mean, this is a this is this is work for us. This is, you know you don't want. You don't want to just be just flagged down as soon as you do. I mean, it's, it's, but it's, it's YouTube is just silly like that. And Google, Google has a, a hatred for me anyway. I took them to court back in two thousand and nine, and then and, uh, they don't they don't really like me that much anyway. They they just use Sonetta as a as an excuse. Sonetta flagged the channel. They flagged fifty videos at one time. Now you know that's not Sonetta on his own couldn't do that. That's a Google thing, right? 50 videos at one time. They don't like you? <laughs> they don't like me. I don't know no. what I say. I don't know what I do. I thought I would be having problems here on Moore's World TV. Shout out to Moore's World TV Citizen. That's right. Moore's World TV Citizens ain't going to let you get flagged like that. And, and I'm yeah. going to tell you, if I, if I turn her, if I... If I turn the Morris World TV citizens on any of these channels, we'll flag 100 miles a minute, but I ain't going to flag. <laughs> I'm going to let y'all talk. I'm going to let y'all live. You know what I'm saying it ain't even that serious, but uh, yeah, uh, I like people' opinion. Yeah, I like your opinion too. I mean, look, we had a nice conversation for two hours or whatever, and yeah. uh, I'm not getting down with what you're talking about. <laughs> yes, you is. I'm getting you a fans. I'm gonna get you a purple fans. <laughs> yeah, chilling. I will wear. I will wear fans. That don't bother me none. That's no, my you, brother. You yeah, you coming all home though? I'm gonna bring you home. Yeah, no, I'm not coming to. I'm not coming to the, to the Moore side too. <laughs> we coming on home, man. Angels <laughs> no. up Bay, Angels <laughs> up up Seven Bay. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, I got to get out of here, man. I'm gonna All grab right. me a little snack tonight, my brother. Yes, I appreciate sir. Yes, sir. you. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. I can't wait the next week that we tackle this topic again. Yes, We're sir. Gonna tackle it till it's done. Till it's done. All right. All right. All right, peace and love, my brother. Peace, peace. That's right. That's my brother, Angel Snup Nup. Uh, I, I really like those conversations, man. I don't care what nobody say. I like them conversations. But now, as I get out of here, family, I just wanted to say to you, you know what I mean? I want y'all to let me have a good night. I want y'all to go ahead and have a good night. Grand Pooba, I've been already in here for two and a half hours. I'm not hitting no link. You can come on the show tomorrow if you email me. But one thing we ain't going to do is start a whole nother conversation at two hours and 38 minutes of one show. All right? So, brother, if you want to deal with this information that I got for you email me at tahakabay at gmail.com tell me the subject matter and be prepared to show your face on the camera tomorrow night because I like the people to see who I'm a give a valuable lesson to. Follow what I'm saying? All right. Shout out to King Moab. Yeah. 
Sunny Fox is in the building. Angel snuffed up in the building. Baby Genie, how y'all doing? Man, thank you for everybody who participated. Eric Barnes, Mellow Cop. Even thank you, Grand Pooba. Grand Pooba say I'm sacred. He said, my man is sacred. That's what he said. Grand Pooba said, my man is sacred. Thank you, Grand Pooba. Appreciate the thought. Thank you to Kelvin Thornton. 12. That's right. South Paul Panda. Pretty crystal clear. That's right. Thank you all. Candy. I want to thank all y'all for joining me tonight. Yeah. That's right. I told y'all, I'm getting ready for my disc jockey job. Because YouTube don't last too long. Yeah. Salute. Appreciate y'all family. But try to be back tomorrow. I would love for Grand Pooba to hit me. That would be a great conversation. He's going to prove that I'm not a moor. Looking forward to that. With that being said, family, take care of yourself. And always love one another like you want to be loved. This is the professor.